Okay, we are back on. Before we uh, discuss the vacant, vacancy and the school committee appointment, uh, we are going to do a moment of silence. Uh, if you please stand. Unfortunately, we have a number of people that we need to ask uh, for a moment of silence for. Michael Harwood, Pamela Rose, Mary Corey, Sister Thomas Moore, and most recently, Deborah McGee. Deborah McGee is the mother of our two fire chiefs, Michael and Chris, and she just passed away after a long, hard-fought battle. She was a real trooper. And Sister Thomas Moore lived to the ripe old age of 102. Just to give you an idea, she was our oldest resident and when I first came back to the board, we recognized her and uh, the full board of selectmen was there, uh, the chairman of the historical uh, commission was there and the gold cane was presented uh, to her. Um, this lady was from Europe where she was a phys ed teacher, a gymnast, and an ambulance driver in World War II. Then she came to the United States in 1964, earned a bachelor's degree in nursing from St. Anne's, a master's from Boston College. She taught psychiatric nursing. She was the administrator at Madonna Manor, and she sang in the choir at St. Mary's Cathedral in Fall River. And she passed peacefully at the age of 102 here in Dighton at the Novitiate on Elm Street. So in memory of all of these people, I would ask for a moment of silence, please. Thank you. Thank you. We send our condolences to the families uh, as well as the friends. At this time, we're going to discuss the school committee appointment. Um, we have four candidates. And before we begin and I start discussing the procedure for how this is going to work this evening, um, I want to ask the candidates, do we, do you want to do this where the three candidates are outside and then we have the one candidate in the room? Or is everybody amenable to just being in the same room? Do you have a preference? I, School I committee. prefer to do one at a time. I also one. prefer Present. that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the first candidate, if you would come to the podium and if the other uh, candidates would step out of the room, please. Who's the first candidate? Uh, Thomas O'Connor. Mr. O'Connor. Good evening, Mr. O'Connor. Good evening. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Thank Absolutely. you very much. Absolutely. Welcome. Um, before we ask questions, I, do you have a statement or did you want to say anything, introduce uh, yourself? I do. I, I, my name is Tom O'Connor. Uh, my wife, Martha, and I live at uh, 2664 Cortland Road. And I'd first like to thank the Board of Selectmen and the School Committee for having me here tonight. Uh, I really do appreciate it. Um, we've lived here since 2012. Uh, we moved here with our three boys. We have one uh, in my letter of intent. Uh, I don't know if you have a chance to review it, but we have a child in uh, elementary school, one in middle school, and one in the high school. Mm -hmm. Our youngest is in the, one of the classrooms that's going to go into the mobile trailer. So we are well versed in what's going on in the elementary school with, with that crowding issue. Uh, and our oldest has been, is a sophomore at the high school, so we're well versed mm -hmm. with some of the issues going on at the high school also. So we're, we're aware of some of the things going on within the schools. Uh, as far as my background, I've been in the military for 29 years. Uh, I'm on active duty now with the National Guard. Uh, I serve in the role on the senior recruiting and retention uh, NCO or non-commissioned officer for the state of Massachusetts. So I oversee a force of 100 recruiters and staff uh, that basically are in charge of talent acquisition and retaining soldiers for the Massachusetts National Guard. Total, we have number of just over 6,000 in our total force right now. Uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, I supervise training, uh, we'll go out and work with school systems in the state, trying to bring some initiatives on a, uh, a service aspect or community outreach aspect into schools, uh, as well as look for prospective, you know, graduates that want to join the National Guard and also serve. We can, since we're, oh, he's next to you, do you want to start with school committee questions that you might have for Mr. O'Connor? Too close. No. Okay. Can, I, can I just say something? Oh, yes, sure. As the chair, I'd just like to um, welcome you this evening and say thank you for your interest in our community and serving the students of Dighton Rehoboth. Thank you. 
Could, um, excuse me, could you just introduce, your you know, introduce yourselves to each candidate just so they know who you are, please? Rachel Dinkus. Um, so I just want to talk to you a little bit about, if you could tell us a little bit about um, any background you had in financials or budgeting. Um, you know, that's a big part of what we do is trying to not only do it in the best interest of the kids, but also try to keep the budget safe for the town and be fiscally responsible. So any um, background that you had in dealing with budgets or financials? Uh, yes, I can answer that. We have, um, so within my organization, within the recruiting battalion for our, our state, we're a little bit different than any other unit in the National Guard in the state as if we are a separate entity and we have a, a direct line to National Guard Bureau, basically to Arlington, Washington, D.C. We have our, our budget comes from the federal government right down to our battalion. It's uh, last year we, we had just over $13 million of what we manage. Uh, that comes in chunks through the year, so we can never truly, we don't get $13 million or, or the, the number, we don't get it right up front. We get it in pieces through the year and we, we put forward, uh, we call them UFRs, or unfunded requests. So we request for money, we might ask for 600000 and get 100000 And we get it in chunks and we have to prioritize where we spend it along the way. Mm -hmm. uh, with that, the money also comes in, we call it different pots, but there's basically different line items. So we get operational money that we can spend on certain operations, but we can't buy stuff, or we can't use it for uh, capital improvements or uh, renting storefront space or leases or anything like that. Then we get specific money that's just for people, where we can put people on additional orders. Uh, so we have to manage the people aspect of it with the money, uh, our stuff money where we can buy things to give out like water bottles, lanyards, uh, community outreach items, outreach items. We can buy major end items with different, different accounts and then our capital budget also. And it ebbs and flows in between there throughout the year. We never really know what we're going to get uh, until, you know, typical with the federal government. Usually in August we get a whole pile of money and then we have to execute quickly uh, try to figure out what to do with it and use it in the best way possible. Okay. No, I think having that financial background is always helpful in this type of position. Thank you. Hi, I'm Janice Terry. Hi. Um, welcome to applying for this position. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I guess you were aware that school committee is a full-time job. It isn't like we meet twice a month and we just do a little paperwork, go to the meeting, go home, and it's done. <laughs> we are constantly involved in the, there are many subcommittees that we have to serve on. Mm -hmm. So it's time consuming, and do you feel that you would have the time to do all of this? I feel I would. I feel I would. I'm, I'm pretty good at, at uh, time management. I think I'm pretty good at time management. <laughs> 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 I, I feel I'm pretty good at time management. Uh, I, you know, I, I work within my career field. It's, it's, never, it's not a nine to five job. It kind of mm -hmm. just happens all the time. Mm -hmm. So I'm always working, always checking the phone always looking at email or working through things. So uh, I'm, I'm used to that aspect of it. I'm used to things kind of coming in constantly uh, and you know, setting aside times where I can chunk through work and get it done and, and uh, without really getting too overwhelmed. So I, I feel like I could do it. And you get a big paycheck for all your time. I, I, heard, I, heard, it's, I heard it's fantastic. Yeah, Zero. compared to our paycheck, you are doing well. Right. Yeah. You are doing well. Um, I guess one of the things that always concerns me, uh, and I've said it for many years, is any people that have run for school committee in the past, because I've been on it a number of years, they come with their own agenda. And I can remember years past, there was one particular person that wasn't happy with the principal at the high school. So his agenda was get on the committee and get that person removed. Sure. That doesn't happen. You're only one of 10. So nine people have to agree with that one person who's there with his own agenda. So it's working together, cooperating together, reaching out and getting additional information if you need it. So um, can't, can't have four or five school committee members getting together and talking because then you've violated the open meeting law and you can be in big trouble. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, but I guess you could reach out to the chair. <laughs> ask her questions. Sure. We do that. I, so. I feel like I, I don't have an agenda. I'm not coming here with an agenda. It's easy for me to say. Uh, I really don't. Uh, I spent my adult life uh, serving, and that's mm -hmm. what I've done. Mm -hmm. I, I got out of high school, spent five years in the regular Army. When I graduated, got out, I left the Army, I uh, went back to UMass Amherst, got a, you know, went back to school, got my degree, met my wife Martha there. Uh, and then I was a traditional guardsman up until 9-11, had been mobilized a couple times. The long and short, I've served my entire, my entire adult mm -hmm. life. And that's really what I want to do. Uh, the one thing I really like about the National Guard and what I do is that I, I'm able to serve the state in that aspect and the 
the federal government and what I do, but it's a community. The, the Guard is at its core, as I mentioned in my letter of intent. It's a community service. We are, and the National Guard started here in Massachusetts, you know, way back 1636 or whatever. So we are a community-based organization and we do a lot of outreach. Uh, and I really am looking at doing this as a service aspect. Uh, I'm used to working at, uh, you know, people think of the military as a stacked organization where it's top-down management. Uh, and it's, it's, you're going to do what you're going to do. Uh, and it's really not, that's not the way to succeed. It's really being collaborative. And, mm -hmm. and instead of being an I, it's a we. Mm -hmm. And we work together. And uh, part of that we is understanding that you may have a vision that you want to get to, and you may not be able to get there. You may have to meet in the middle and, uh, and be adaptive. And that's really what I, I look at you know, with services. You know, somewhere meeting in the middle, if you have to, uh, being adaptive to, to the environment and what you're working with. And sometimes there just isn't the, the ability to get to where you really want to be, but you can, you can collaborate between people and meet in the middle. So if we have a big project we want to undertake, we can call the National Guard? <laughs> <laughs> you can call me. You can certainly call me. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Thank you. Thank you. Um, good evening. Good evening. Liza Kucher, Chair, um, presently of the School Committee. And Mrs. Terry hit upon what one of my questions was, and that was regarding the time factor. Um, we do meet monthly, twice a month, but there are multiple subcommittees and such that um, require time in addition to that. So sure. you answered that question. Thank you. Um, and the fact that you have stu children in all three, the elementary school, the middle school, and the high school, um, my question is not an agenda question, but are there any issues of particular concern or interest for you and your family right now or from what you've heard in town regarding the school district? Um, one would think with my youngest son being in the elementary school that the crowded issue in the classroom mm -hmm. is, is a concern. Correct me, it is a concern, but it's not, really. I, I, don't, I really don't think it is. I think the school and the teachers, we walked into that classroom and we were expecting it to be crowded and mm -hmm. noisy with 44 kids in there. 43 kids in there, quiet as can be. The teachers did, I don't think they could have done a better job mm -hmm. setting that up. The teachers and the staff setting up that classroom. They, and it, one of the teachers in school was telling us that she walked in there and the classroom in the front, there was nobody there. She didn't know where they were. They had all 43 of them on the other side doing math together and they didn't, she had no idea there was anybody in the classroom. They were quiet. And the teachers involved the kids setting the classroom up and taught them, you know, the boundaries of, hey, let's set the classroom up. Let's not put this item here because it's going to be distracting to the other class. Let's put it over here. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're really involved in them and the, and the kids learn. So mm -hmm. I don't think when they transition outside, I don't think there's going to be a real big leap. We're not concerned with it at all. Uh, the high school, I guess the roof was a concern because my son was getting water leaked on him in class yeah. last year. But yeah. other than that, there's, um, I don't really have major concerns mm -hmm. along that line. Mm -hmm. I can see things happen and changing. So no, nothing huge. Okay. Thank you. Hey, Tom. Glenn Jefferson. Um, in your opinion, what would you say are the top three, or even if you only have two, biggest issues that are uh, facing this district? You know, I'm sure as many of us, we've seen what's going on the past few years. Sure. What would you summarize? Uh, I think it would probably be the regional cooperation group. That's, that would be a, a concern. Uh, and I think funding. Um, you know, the, the, there was the override in Rehoboth for, for this year, uh, but that's, uh, you know, Dr. Azar yeah. talked last night, that's not guaranteed moving forward. That's only for this year. Mm -hmm. So we're, what happens with that money afterwards and what does the school do for budgeting after that? Uh, I think those, the, the money aspect is a, is a concern. And, you know, collaborating with the Rehoboth side, to, to, with the Rehoboth school committee to really kind of build a team of teams. I, I think that's a hurdle that if, if that could happen, that could be a game changer and really, uh, you know, be a force multiplier in the school district and bring the schools, bring the district and the high school online together uh, and kind of bridge that gap. Because there seems to be, a, from my ask, my point of view, there seems to be a, a gap there between Rehoboth and Dighton. I think if, if there could be a team of teams that, that came together uh, and collaborated, I think that would be the, a game changer. You meant to say selectmen or, because you said Rehoboth school committee members, right? You meant to select. Yes. Yeah, because I didn't say it's, from our dynamics, you know, we are. I said, I said school committee? Yeah, but I, I, I knew what you were saying, but you know, we are, as, as Jenna said, there's 10 unique personalities, mm -hmm. but we are, um, you know, many of the members, Richard, for example, he says, well, you know, we do get along pretty well. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting, you know, you get 10 personalities, but mm -hmm. sure. we all get it done. Sometimes managing personalities is the hardest aspect of working in a big group, so. Uh -huh. That's what the chair has to do. Uh -huh. <laughs> See me nodding my head. Second <laughs> yeah. bullet. Um, you talked about deployment. Have you actually been sent to a uh, area of combat? Uh, I, de I did some state deployments right after 9-11. I was at the, standing on the dam at the Watrusa Reservoir for a while, and then I deployed in 2002 for a Homeland Defense mission. Uh, when I came back from that, I came, up, came under recruiting, uh, and I haven't deployed since then. I've been in recruiting. I'm a career recruiter. 
Uh, sometimes when you get into recruiting, not everybody can do it. And once you're there, people tend to hold on. They don't want to let you go uh, to, to keep it. It's a, it's a strategic organization. Where's building. your headquarters? Where's uh, your office? My office is in Hanscom Air Force Base. Oh, OK. Uh, but I manage the whole state. So I, I'm up there most of the time, but I bounce around across the state also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I noticed that you mentioned the development of the STEM lab. And at, at uh, DR, we have the STEAM program yes. with the addition of the A beating arts. But um, so I found that interesting. We're, we're working to, to change our STEM lab to a STEAM lab, uh, but we're bringing, we need funding for that. We're waiting yeah. for that additional funding to come down to change that over and, and kind of rework it a little bit. Mm -hmm. No, that's all I have. <clears throat> Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I only have one question, um, and you did address it in the in your letter of interest, but you know, the, the public can't read it. Sure. So I guess I want to just ask. Um, I know there's a vacancy on the school committee, which is probably why you had applied. Um, but why the school committee and not another committee? So what is your passion? Like why why are you interested in being on the school committee specifically? I've it might. I'm going to go back to what I do in recruiting the National Guard, but I've worked with students at the high school level. Um, there's different ways to recruit. Some people go out and just canvas areas and talk to many people. I was a high school recruiter. I like talking to kids, uh, and that's really what I like to talk to young people uh, and just see where, the, see where their aspirations lie and see if we might be able to help them out. And uh, I think working with young kids, I've coached for a long time, baseball, lacrosse, and football. I just work, like working with kids, coaching and mentoring along the way. And that's really, I think, why I kind of focused on the school committee aspect of it. Thank you very much. I think Mrs. Gulak kind of stole my question, so <laughs> Mr. Chairman, my, uh, my question. Sure. Uh, I want to thank you for your service. Thank you. And I understand you've been deployed in the past. My concern would be whether you think you'd be mobilized or deployed in the future. I kind don't. of answered that question. But if you could elaborate on that just a little bit. I know you probably don't have a definite answer on that, but. Uh, I'm fairly certain I won't. I, I, the, the role I fill in my organization is um, it, it's a pretty secure role, and I don't think I would uh, deploy. Uh, I'm also nearing the end of my career. I've been in a long time, so I'm an old man in a young man's <laughs> business. So the, uh, I'm nearing the end of my career, so I, I think you know, I, the chances of that are slim to none for me. Yeah. Deploy. I couldn't say definitely, but I think it's a very, yeah, very small that's, that's, chance of that happening. It's a fair answer. Thank you. That's it for me. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Thank Mr. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, if you don't mind, sir, just sending in Jennifer. Sure. Thank you. Is it okay with the school committee if we all do one question each? And I only ask that not to limit anybody. I would never do that. But we have a long meeting after this mm -hmm. already. Mm -hmm. So is that okay? is everyone amenable to that? Yep. Mrs. I, I, the same I question looking at just asked. Right? I think the same, same question mm -hmm. that we yep. asked. Exa mm -hmm. Yes. But I didn't want to be holding anyone mm -hmm. to that. But I felt the same way. So that's perfect. Yeah. Good evening, you absolutely may. Thank you for coming. We appreciate it. You um, can do an introductory statement. Maybe if you want to tell us a little about yourself, that would be great. Sure. Uh, my name is Jennifer Dichkowski. Um I've been a resident of the town for eight years now. Um, but I feel like uh, Dighton called me quite a few times throughout my life. I started my first job working for the YMCA before and after school program at the Dighton Elementary School um, in 2001, 2002. Um, so that's how I sort of got really introduced to the town. But prior to that, as a child, my dad used to play basketball games um, at the elementary school when the cafeteria was still a gym. Mm -hmm. Um, so I used to come to town for that. I grew up um, in Lakeville. Mm -hmm. um, and so I've loved, uh, our, when our apartment burned down when we were living in Estona, um, we had an aunt in town who invited us to stay with her and um, we got to live here for about six months and we decided to purchase our first home here. So um, I'm raising two children in the town. Uh, they are both at Dighton Elementary School. I have a third grader and a fourth grader. Um, I have been involved in education my whole life. Um, my dad was a teacher, um, and I'm a lifelong learner. I went to Bridgewater State. Um, I was on a track for secondary education, but I was putting myself through college. So when I found out I was gonna have to finance a fifth year of school, um, I changed plans a little bit, and I've been in sort of non-traditional um, education outside of school, after school time, out of school time mm -hmm. since then. Wow. We'll start with you, Ms. Dingus. 
Um, I want to talk to you a little bit about financials and um, budgeting, and if you have any background in that, and if so, sure. you can tell us a little bit about if you've looked at budgets before um, and dealt with financials and budgets. Yeah. Um, so I spent uh, eight years working for the Girl Scouts of Eastern Massachusetts, uh, where I was the director of Girl Program and Partnerships. Um, and I had to develop a rather large budget. I oversaw um, programming um, for 3,000 girls um, in underserved communities across Massachusetts. Um, that was an entirely grant funded program. So we were doing not only budgeting, but grant allocations. So we had to account for every expenditure. Um, some of those grants included state grants. Um, so working with the Department of Education um, on those grants as well. So lots of experience with budgeting. Uh, I learned a lot in that position. Um, and uh, you know, I continue working in my current position. I work for another organization now, but um, I also have to work with budgets as well. This is Terry. Hi, I'm Janice Terry. Um, I know you know what school committee is about. <laughs> my question had been about the um, time involved in serving on school committee. Uh, it's not um, you get a packet, you read it, you go to a meeting, go home wait for two weeks, another packet comes in and you read it, and there's a lot more involved in it. There's a lot of subcommittees that the chair asks for volunteers, and I think most of the time she gets them. But there's negotiations that have to go on. Um, warrant committee, um, policy committee, so you really have to commit a lot of extra time as a school committee member. Um, I said earlier that um, in the past I've been well aware of people who have run the school committee because they have an agenda there and I, I guess we're kind of doing the same question so I'm going to tell you the same thing I told the first candidate. <laughs> um, we, did, we did have one person run the school committee many years ago, um, wasn't happy about a situation, ran the school committee but it, the motive was they were going to get rid of the principal. Um, because they weren't happy with the decision. And that really can't happen unless you got nine other people to agree with them. So you know you're one of ten. Mm -hmm. you are, what you feel and how you handle things matters. But there has to be a lot of cooperation between the five Dyson members and the five Republican members. And most of the time we work well, I don't think it's a Dighton Rehoboth thing, as some people like to say. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's a lot of cooperation. Um, are you game for all of the time that it takes to serve on? And you don't get paid. <laughs> there are many roles in my life I don't get paid for. So. Um, so to answer your first question about time commitment, um, I think if anybody who knows me knows that I don't do anything halfway, um, so I commit myself wholeheartedly. I've been a volunteer in the community since I've been a resident here. I've served on the cultural committee, which is a time commitment. Uh, I've served on the Friends of the um, Public Library. Um, I have um, most recently, in the last several years, um, been working with the Special Education Parents Advisory Council, and I serve as the co-president of that council, um, which is a large time commitment. Um, I am also a volunteer troop leader for my um, daughter's Girl Scout troop. Um, so I do a lot of things. I wear a lot of hats, um, many of which I don't get paid for, including being a mother. Um, so I am fine with that. Um, I am fine with the time commitment. I am blessed with a partner who supports me wholeheartedly in everything that I do. Um, and so uh, he was my biggest cheerleader, and he's not here tonight because he's home with my children. So that affords me the ability to be out here and doing the things that I'm doing. So. Thank you. Hi, Jen. Chairwoman Kucher. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Liza Kucher, Chair of the School Committee right now. Thank you for your interest in serving on the School Committee. Um, my question is, are there any issues of particular interest or concern for you in serving the School District and the School Committee? Um, you know, I would say overall, um, my interest is just in serving our community and serving our children as a whole. Um, I think education is incredibly important. Public education is incredibly important. Um, it's a leveling factor. It is something that makes us stand apart um, from other civilizations. Um, and it's something that I've benefited from in my life. Um, so it's something that I want to work hard for. 
Um, there isn't a particular interest at this time. Um, you know, of course, I would love to learn more about and be involved in um, looking at our buildings and our infrastructure, looking um, at our budgets, looking at, uh, but, but mostly being a resource and being able to help where I can um, and lend my own expertise and training um, wherever I can. Hi, Jen. Glenn Jefferson. Um, so I have one question, but I wanted to see if you could elaborate on something you mentioned to Eliza's response. So when you use the word community, um, could you just define what, in your opinion, that means in regards to this? And then also my second question is, in your opinion, what are the two biggest issues that you feel this uh, district faces? Sure. Um, so your first question about community. Um, I grew up in a district, uh, Freetown Lakeville School District, um, and I went to school with um, classmates from um, fifth grade on. So um, I actually, I have a classmate that I also then went to Bridgewater State with. So we went to school for uh, 12 years together, which was really nice. Um, it built a sense of community as a student to have not only um, other students that you know, but you know their parents and you can count on them. Um, and I love that about Dighton Rehoboth and that's why we moved here. Um, because it was a community like that. My niece and nephew both go to Rehoboth schools. I have a niece in uh, Palmer River Elementary School and a nephew at Beckwith. Um, and it's just as important to me that they are um, involved and engaged in their education and getting a quality education. Um, both of my kids went to Dighton Rehoboth Preschool. My daughter, um, we paid tuition for her to go, and my son, um, because he receives special education services. Um, and I think it's lovely that they um, come together, or they came together, um, Dighton and Rehoboth together, um, and then they'll see each other again um, when they get to high school, many of them. So um, I think that's a really lovely thing that we have going for us. Um, we can be stronger together than we can be apart. Uh, we have a lot more resources when we share them than if we were to go it alone. And I think I made that point um, at, a school com uh, at a school committee meeting a couple weeks ago um, when I was speaking about the commissioner. Um, and I don't believe that the commissioner would ever allow us to split our school district um, for that very reason. Um, so hopefully that addresses your yep. first question. And can you remind me of your second question? Uh, what are your opinion your two biggest issues that are facing this district? Um, I definitely think uh, one of the biggest issues facing the district is not unique to our district, which is our budget and the uh, money that we're resourcing. Um, I think that's, uh, and the way that the state calculates for um, reimbursements um, for transportation, special education, um, and as a district, um, I, I think that school districts um, are at a disadvantage to, um, sorry, regional districts are at a disadvantage to districts that are on their own um, in the way things are formulated right now. So I definitely think that's an issue for us. Um, and I think just overall, we have aging schools um, and looking at the resources that our, our teachers need, um, that our, our building staff need in order to do the wonderful work that I know that they all are very passionate about doing. Um, so whatever we can do to sort of streamline things for them and help find resources, I think is another big issue. Uh, I can't ask you about military service because that. Uh, what I would like to ask you about is, uh, you talk you talk about working with the Department of Ed uh, on uh, under an improvement grant. Were you involved? Was it your employer who got the grant, or were you involved with uh, getting the grant and then working under it? That's a good question. Um, so actually, it was my predecessor who got the grant the first time. Mm -hmm. um, and it's called um, the After School and Out of School Time Quality Improvement Grant, and it's about mm -hmm. curriculum development. Um, and so every two years, the grant is awarded to a new cohort. Um, and in the interim, you can reapply, mm -hmm. but only those um, that have been awarded in the first year can reapply in the second year. So for the first two years of that grant, it was my predecessor that applied for them, and then I reapplied for the following few years after that. So were you working with administrators and teaching staff? Yes. In this, okay, yes. thank you. So I almost feel weird asking you this just because I see you at the school committee meetings when I go. Um, why specifically school committee? I know there's a vacancy right now. Um, 
there's the opportunity to apply, but why a school committee and maybe not another committee besides cultural council, which I know you are on? Um, well, I think, you know, education, as I've said, is, is incredibly important to me. Um, I think it opens doors, um, and certainly it, it had for me. Um, I grew up uh, in a different time. It's very difficult um, for our children now. They're facing things um, that we never had to contend with. Um, and I think it's really important that we stick our necks out for them because they can't come to the ballot box and they can't vote. Um, we have to be their voices and um, I would like to be part of that and help um, lead the way for them. Thank you very much. Mr. Pacheco. Yeah. As you know, we had to purchase six uh, trailers and uh, I wasn't pleased with that, that we got to that point where we had to buy trailers. If you become a school committee member, what will you be doing as a school committee member to avoid this in the future? Say the middle school, uh, to avoid having to buy modulars versus actually adding to the building? Yeah, that's a tough question, um, given that I haven't really been part of the um, building assessment committee um, and looking at what the infrastructure needs are specifically. Um, my daughter currently is one of the 44 in the library right now. So I can tell you that while it's not the optimum solution, when she gets to move to that trailer, it's mm. going to be a heck of a lot better. And her scores on her MCAS are going to be higher than if she has to stay in the library to take that test. Um, so I think it is of importance for everyone that we know that with new construction come more families. Um, and as we are allowing and awarding these building permits and then occupancy permits that were prepared for the children coming into our school district, um, and that we're looking ahead. We're not mm. planning for tomorrow. We're planning for six years from now um, because th that's when we're going to have the need. Sure. So I would definitely, on the school committee, want to be part of that. I'd want to learn more. I'd want to get involved um, and find out really what the needs are, where, what are we looking at in terms of population growth so that we can plan ahead for that. Thank you. Thank you so much. We appreciate it very Thank you. much. Thank you. Do you mind sending in Mr. Moniz? Sure. Thank you. Good evening. Hello. Thank you so much. Hello. Thank Do you I for coming. Stand yeah, you can yeah. stand right there. <laughs> There's a microphone. Sure. Uh, before we begin, I just wanted to give you the opportunity, if you wanted to introduce yourself, um, tell us who you are, why you're interested in this position. Um, it's a pleasure to meet you, and thank you for being sure. here. Thank evening. you for having me. Absolutely. Uh, so my name is Justin Moniz. Um, I'm a, a new resident to the town. I moved here in um, July of 2017. Um, so I came at sort of a uh, an interesting time in the Dighton Rehoboth School District um, history. So, um, you know, I, I lived through that. I was, my daughter is at the elementary school, so her teacher was one of those who uh, received a, a notice of layoff. And, um, you know, I, I saw the pain and the heartache that she was going through and all the other educators were going through. And uh, I, I said to myself at that meeting at the Auditorium. I said, if there's something that I can do to, to help prevent this from happening again, then I need to try and, 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 and do that. So uh, a little background for me was um, is I graduated from uh, URI with a uh, bachelor's degree in education. Uh, also received a second bachelor's degree in mathematics, got a uh, master's degree in um, mathematics education. I've uh, been teaching since 2009 uh, high school for nine years and recently uh, at CCRI as a college professor, full-time college professor. So uh, I have an you know, extensive background in education, I feel, and I feel like it would be uh, a valuable asset to the, the town of Dighton, to the school committee, um, and, and to the regionalized um, uh, district that we have here in Dighton Road. Thank you for that. Mrs. Davis. Hi. Hello. Um, so obviously you've got extensive uh, financial background, um, but do you have a background in budgeting or you know, either creating a budget or picking through a budget and kind of dissecting it and if you could tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so I mean, as far as a, a, a personal budget that I have for, for my family, that's that's my department. Um, I have an Excel spreadsheet that I have a five-year plan. Um, my wife thinks I'm crazy, but that's, <laughs> that's just what that's what I have. That's the type of personality that I have, that I, I like to make sure that I know exactly what's coming in and exactly what's going out, and everything is accounted for. Um, you know, I, I actually originally 
was at Bryant as an accounting major, but uh, decided that I didn't want to sit behind a desk, no offense to any accountants out there. Um, <laughs> but teaching has really been my passion, so that's, that's why I, I went and made the switch in to, to URI. So as far as budgeting, that's, that's my background. I am the person who has created that budget for our family and um, you know, has able to, been able to meet all of our goals financially um, due, due to that budget. Hi, I'm Janice Terry. Um, I'm just going to say a little something about accountants because I'm sure. married to one. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's no longer employed, but uh, old enough to retire. And he is a stickler for doing the checkbook. And if it's off three pennies, I just say add it somewhere else. <laughs> so he, oh no, no, got to have that double line on the bottom. Do you operate that way too? Uh, for me, I, I like to have to understand exactly where things came in and how it came out, how it went out. So I use um, personally um, an app that kind of tracks spending. It's called Mint uh, because it allows me to look exactly what's coming in and what's going out. So I can see uh, net balances as far as um, you know. This month I, I exceeded my grocery budget. This month I exceeded my um, my my eating out budget and. So we can have that discussion with my wife to say, you know, we went out to eat four times last month. We need to kind of scale it back. Uh, so to answer your question, yes. How does that yeah. work for you? <laughs> oh, my wife is a very patient woman. She knows, she knows that I am, uh, you know, a mathematician at heart and that I, I watch the budget. And she, I think, appreciates it, that someone is looking out for it <laughs> and uh, making sure that we're all uh, squared away and, and, and responsible with, with our spending. Um, so, you know, to answer your question, I do like to have a reason for spending. Uh, I like to make sure that all of the finances are going to things that are going to be meaningful. And if something is off, I like to know why, because that's just the nature of what I do for a living. I mean, I'm a mathematician. I kind of need to know. Who you are. Right. Yeah, right. That's so. what I put there. And that wasn't even my question. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, as far as being on school committee, mm -hmm. uh, and you said you have attended meetings, so... I've attended a couple of meetings. Okay. Yes. Um, it's not one of those you get a packet, uh, go to a meeting, go home, forget it for two weeks, get another packet, this over. There is a lot of time involved, um, a lot of subcommittees that I think most people aren't even aware that that's the commitment mm -hmm. of a school committee member. Um, so are you able to commit to time beyond just going to these school committee meetings mm -hmm. and, um, and you don't get paid to do it? Yeah, Sometimes that's you not do a better motivation. job if you don't get paid. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but anyways, will you, do you feel that you'd be able to commit that kind of time? Because it is, it is a true commitment. Mm -hmm. So I, I do feel that I, I, I would be able to commit that time. Uh, in the position that I'm in now, uh, my schedule my schedule is very flexible. Um, we I can essentially make my own hours, and my full time load is only 15 hours a week. So um, it's not like I'm going to be there 40, 50, 60 hours, and then I have to try and scramble to figure out how I'm going to dedicate time to the school committee. Um, so my time is flexible now, and. I served on committees um, when I was at North Providence on subcommittees. I was on the negotiation committee. I was on the, I was, I was a building delegate. So, you know, I'm, I'm fully aware of the fact that there are these subcommittees um, with, uh, with respect to the school committee. Um, you know, teacher evaluation committees, making sure that um, the value of education that our students are getting is, is there. So uh, I am aware of it. And yes, I can um, commit time to those subcommittees and also to the reading and material that it takes to be a school committee member. Thank you. Well. Good evening. Well. Thank you for being here. Eliza sure. Kutcher, chair of the committee right now. Um, and my question to you is, are there any issues of particular interest or concern that you have right now regarding the district or serving on the school committee? So I, I don't necessarily have any specific issues. Obviously, what I came into as a new resident uh, is a little alarming to me, and I'm not, you know, pointing the finger or anything mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. uh, all I s uh, simply want to do is make sure that there, if there's something that I can do to help, then I'm, I'm going to be willing uh, to do that. Um, on, on one of the meetings that I went to, I did um, notice that someone in the town uh, talked about a plan for allergies, and that was something that was really interesting to me. That the 
and saw that the town was willing to take the extra steps to be proactive and not reactive. And that's definitely something that um, you know, I feel strongly about in, in education is that we need to make sure that we are uh, ahead of the game. We wanna be able to see uh, the current trends, trends in education and then be able to provide those uh, current trends to our students so that they get the best quality of education that they can get. Um, so as far as any immediate issues in the education that my daughter is getting, uh, I'm not seeing anything um, partic mm -hmm. in particular. Uh, the facilities uh, uh, is a little bit of alarming to me, you know, given the fact that we have the modular classrooms, but we have to do with what we have. Mm -hmm. um, so that is a, an area of concern for me, if there were, mm -hmm. was to be one. Um, so so that, that's pretty much it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Hi, right, Glenn Jefferson. Um, so kind of ask a couple, well, one main question, but you commented, I was interested when you mentioned, you know, you kind of moved into the town and what people consider as the fiasco of last year. Um, but, you know, I had been probably 16 months before I decided to run going to every school committee meeting because it was when the real fiasco started probably seven or eight years ago. And uh, what happened last year shouldn't have been a surprise to anyone. Um, those of us that have been here knew it was coming. We've been saying it was coming. But um, with that, what's, what's your understanding of what caused that and why we were where we were, why that happened. I'm curious on, you know, how much you had been following or if you had just literally just dropped into it. At yeah, so I mean, I, for the most part, I was sort of just dropped into it, but um, so a little background knowledge uh, or information that I was able to dig up was the funding formula uh, was off uh, for the town of uh, Dighton and the town of Rehoboth. And the town of Rehoboth essentially did not pay their fair share for a number of years. And then when they were um, told that they needed to pay up, so to speak, they did not pay up the entire amount. And that led to a deficit in the, uh, the budget. So that's the general understanding of, of what I believe uh, led to that issue, was it was uh, a lack of funding on, not on the town of Dighton, uh, but more on the town of Rehoboth, and making sure that we are working together uh, to make sure that that doesn't happen again is definitely a, a point of, of um, contention. Yeah. For sure. And then the quick last summary one was, what do you feel the two biggest or you know biggest issues that you see this district facing? Biggest issue, uh, so one, definitely, uh, it, just as a new resident and seeing all of the uh, new construction uh, that's happening in the town of Dighton, I mean, it definitely still has that small town feel, which is amazing, uh, but the more we start to develop, I mean, it's it, you generally don't get retirees that move into these new developments, and you generally get new families, and uh, I can speak to that in my development that I moved into. I mean, you see the bus drop these kids off, and they just pour off. Um, so, and that's only going to get worse as these young families start to have kids who are now in school and all of their kids are in school and not just one or two or three of them. Um, so being able to have space for these students is definitely one of those uh, issues that I see that the town is going to face uh, given the fact that they're already having that issue. Um, being able to house students in the uh, elementary school. So uh, that's one. And then, you know, just making sure that uh, we are keeping track of the financial responsibilities of, of both towns, just making sure that we are together on this and that this is an agreement that, uh, that we need to fulfill and that the town of Rehoboth cannot be allowed to do what they did before. And that, not saying that that's something that they're, they're intending on doing, but making sure that it just doesn't happen again. So, so those are, I guess, two major issues that I would see that this district might be facing. Uh, I got a question for Mrs. Terry. Is your husband watching this tonight? <laughs> I hope not. No, he's probably asleep. Okay. Now. Okay. Um, in looking at your letter, um, you have experience with uh, budgeting, teacher evaluation, contract negotiation, mm -hmm. all of the kinds of things that uh, school committee people have to do. Um, I like to comment that your personal views of education align well with the vision of the district. So you've, um, let's say, educated yourself on Dighton Rehoboth. Did I was trying to find a mission statement, but that was difficult to find. And <laughs> that's usually um, probably down. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and and um, uh, I got to tell you, it's refreshing to read that you are satisfied with the quality of education that your child is receiving, even though you're aware of the facilities situation we had. So I don't really have a question. I'm just commenting on, on what you put here, and, and I feel very positive about those statements. 
Thank you very much. I feel positive, but I still have a question. Sure. Um, I feel like you've addressed this, um, but I'm still going to ask it anyway. Um, I know there's a vacancy, and that's why you're applying. Mm -hmm. um, why school committee, and why not another committee? You've lived in town for a little while, so why school committee, and why not, I don't know, cultural council or, or some other body? So uh, given my background in education, I feel like if I'm going to get involved in something, I should probably get involved in something that I know. Mm -hmm. And uh, the school committee seems like a natural fit for me, again, given my education, given my experience, um, my, my, my work experience. Um, you know, as a, a person who served on committees directly with the school committee and being, you know, familiar with the things that they are responsible for, for doing. So that's, that's why I've selected the school committee. It's, it's education. It's something that I'm very passionate about. I've been passionate about. That's why I went into education and not accounting. Again, no, no uh, offense. Um, but that was my calling. So that's, that's something that I want to make sure that, you know, our students are being provided with the best quality education that they can get. Um, because I believe that, you know, as a small town, we want to make sure that our students are, are rooted here is that they feel like they're getting a quality education here in Dighton and that they come back and, and start their own families here and, and start a tradition of having uh, generations of, of Dighton residents. Um, so that's, that's why I've selected the school committee. Again, I, I wouldn't be on a committee for basketball. I'm not very good at basketball. So I've, <laughs> I've, I've, we tend as human beings to gravitate towards the things that we are, are good at. So uh, that, that's why I've selected the, the, the school committee. Thank you very okay. much. Selectman Pacheco. You mentioned about the modulus, and that's what my question, you mentioned about the modulus, the six modulus yes. that we had to buy. Mm -hmm. So I found it troubling that we had to, to get those that we didn't plan on this and we didn't add on to the school sure. building. So as a school board member, what will you be doing on this committee uh, to avoid that in the future? So obviously, um, we want to make sure that we work directly with the planning board uh, to see what type of developments are, are coming into to the town so that way we can prepare for an influx or potential influx of, of students. Uh, so that way we have the physical space uh, to house these students and to educate these students. Um, so, you know, working together, um, you know, with the other town or the other committees in the town, I think is going to be an important asset. Um, you know, or, or facet of being a, a school committee member. So uh, that's definitely something that I'm, I'm familiar or interested in doing. Um, and I think that w having some transparency between the, the committees will help with that process, will help uh, ensure that that won't happen again. Uh, if, if there's some, some clear communication, not saying that there hasn't been in the past, uh, but just making sure that, you know, there's a a hundred house development coming in that we need to be prepared for you know what that's going to do make sure that um, the uh, the accounting so to speak is going to, to be done thank you okay thank you so much we sure. appreciate it. all right thank you very thank much you. I appreciate do you mind it. asking ms barlow to come sure up? thank if you I just grab my absolutely of course you can freezing out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. now we know how you feel I know how I feel. <laughs> Can you give that poor gentleman the space heater? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Good evening. How are you? Hi. Hello. Thank you. Hi. Hi. I'm Patricia Barlow. Mm -hmm. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet all of you. Ms. Barlow, do you want to just take a couple moments just to kind of introduce yourself to us? Sure. Um, I. I am a resident here in Dayton. We've lived here since 2002. In my letter, it did say that we moved here primarily because of the excellent reputation of the school district. And um, I did have a 28-year career as an educator. I still consider myself an educator. It's hard to let go. Um, with the same district in East Providence, Rhode Island, the last um, I was actually 28 years as an educator, and I don't know if I mentioned 19 of those as an elementary school principal. So I was a principal of four schools in my tenure there, um, three of which were Title I schools. The school that I was placed at the last um, 11 years was non-Title I. Um, East Providence is an urban ring district, so um, there were many issues that arose 
throughout the course of my career. It's a wonderful district, um, but we did have many challenges and I have those experiences to bring. Um, as an educator, I did come to many, many school committee meetings. I presented our scores at often, at usually annually, we would be asked to come and tell about some things happening. Um, and so I would present at the school committee meetings and we would also, um, I would also go and try to support all of the district initiatives like the presentation of the budget whenever I was called upon to go. So um, I served on many, many committees, curriculum committees, search committees for central office administration, mm -hmm. budget, um, not budget, I shouldn't say that, building committees have been part of building initiatives and school improvement and um, district planning committees. Mm -hmm. So I have those experiences to offer and I feel as though I still have so much to bring to the field of education and a real strong desire to contribute in some way. I love our small town, both the rural communities. I know that you have a rich tradition of excellent um, education. Both of my children attended the schools and are doing well, thankfully. Both graduated from college and have jobs and, and that's always a relief as a parent. Um, and so I would like to be a part of um, giving back, I think, to the community now that I have the time. I had really, to be honest with you, raising my children and working full time as an administrator. And it wasn't a long commute, but with the commute, I spent an awful lot of time in my car. And I wasn't able to give, but now I am able to give. And I'm excited to contribute in any way that I can. I have been out in the schools, um, particularly just volunteering in my grandson's school. Um, the school that I taught, uh, taught at and the school that I was the principal at, um, I would say the climate is very similar to the schools here in Dayton and Rehoboth. I've been in Beckwith Middle School recently as well in the fifth grade. So I've seen a little bit of what's happening in the classroom. The schools are bright and cheery. They're warm and welcoming. I was always impressed um, by the, the way the facilities are kept. Um, I have to say that and I hope that we continue to maintain our facilities and um, a lot of community involvement. And I tried to be involved to the extent that I was able to when my kids were in the school system. Uh, but I did leave, um, you know, I trusted the school committee and the central office administration. And I have to say, you've done an outstanding job. It's a, it's a wonderful school community. So that, mm -hmm. I think gives you an overview yeah. or a little bit about, I hope I didn't go on too no, long. No, 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 we're going to ask questions. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be tested. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Mrs. Davis. Oh, hi. Um, you have obviously a very extensive educational background, um, but can you tell us a little bit about your background with budgets? Obviously part of our job is to be be responsible for our towns. Um, so any background that you have and as far as kind of dissecting the budget, um, looking at budgets, anything like that? Well, um, annually we were required as principals to develop a budget for our school. And the budget had to be justified in relation to the school improvement plan. I believe personally that all the whole entire budgeting process begins with the district plan and the school improvement plan. That really should be detailed enough so that you can. Um, cost out what um, will be needed in order to implement the plan. Um, so I would develop a budget and then I would have to defend it and it would be approved by the superintendent at, or you know I typically would get what I asked for. Um, but sometimes as uh, we went through the year we weren't always the funds weren't always released and I did not work uh, as part of the budgeting process at the district level um, but I sat in on many many budget presentations I, I do understand the budgeting process I've um, I do have my superintendent certificate and have taken a course in school finance I I, I 
it is a very complex process. I think that a person would really need to immerse themselves into the budget and really look at the strategic plan to be able to determine areas where there may be a lack of fund allocated funding and areas where there may be too much earmarked for that particular um, category. Um, that is a really loaded question. I do understand the process, but I, I, my instinct is to move towards strategic planning, to be honest with you, because that would outline, we're here for one reason, well, <laughs> you're here for one reason and one reason only, and that is to provide an excellent education for children. So um, clearly the curriculum it needs to be first class and there has to be monies available to provide for professional development and curriculum writing and that curriculum really needs to be detailed because resources um, are needed in order to fully implement. You need to have um, the facilities maintained and I touched on that. In, in the district that I came from, we went th through some really hard times in the district and they were primarily because facilities were not maintained properly. So if you don't have a um, capital improvement fund, which I know that we do, but and I, I do see that our schools are well maintained and I may be wrong, but they do, they are clean and um, maintained. I was impressed by that when I came and even upon my return where I've gotten back into the school. Um, but I would encourage the district to definitely maintain um, and also to accurately project the number of students coming into the district because um, facilities may need to be added on or you're going to deal with some issues with overcrowding, which I know you're, you, you're familiar with. So um, capital improvement plan, um, curriculum, and um, projecting students coming in would also um, impact the budget with regard to staffing. Um, it's important to not only know the number of students that are moving into a community, but the types of students that are moving in and the types of services they're going to need. I, I am well aware that there are many mandated um, uh, expenditures and there's not always enough funding provided from the state. And so the burden falls on the local community to provide for that. Um, trying to uh, <laughs> let you know that I, I do have a, a broad overview and understanding of what is entailed in developing a school district budget. Um, no, that's perfect. That's perfect. Okay, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I, I no, don't want to go on and on, but <laughs> I would say the key is it's all linked to really detailed strategic planning and, okay. and having that be a living document that you're working mm -hmm. from. Thank you. Mrs. Terry. Mrs. Terry. Yes, <laughs> Terry. Um, you, you've said so much of, you've answered all my <laughs> questions <laughs> and more. So thank you for all that you've provided. Um, as a school committee person, you realize that you're committing a good deal of time. It's not, like I've said to the other people, you get a packet and you go to the meeting and two weeks later you get another packet but that's not all there is to it. You've talked about serving on so many different committees. We have to do the same. We have to commit to uh, negotiating committees, the um, policy committees. So there's a lot of time that you have to devote to it. And I always just say, and we don't get paid to do it, mm -hmm. but we like doing it. Mm -hmm. We're here for the children to give the very best education we can. Mm -hmm. um, so you have an understanding of time, time that would be involved and you sound like you're ready to. I absolutely do and I just want to reiterate, I am, to be quite honest with you, too young to be retired. Mm -hmm. um, but it was time mm -hmm. for a change in my life. Um, 19 years as a school principal is a long time and I'm ready to learn something more and new. But I really do have a passion for education. I love children. I am excited when I feel like I'm part of something that's bigger than I am, something that makes a difference in the world. And that's really what teaching children, or students, I should say, because I know they, are, they go all the way up to mm -hmm. high school, um, is all about. And so it would be my 
pleasure, my, a privilege for me to serve in that capacity. I really would enjoy it, and I do have the time now um, to offer. And I'm used to going out to meetings at night. I think that what it would do is offer me opportunities to get more involved um, even with what's happening during the day because I'm not familiar with that but you have all of that information <laughs> you receive all of that right now I am volunteering in my grandson's school I don't know if I mentioned that but I do enjoy that very much because it keeps me connected to the schools so I'm willing to put in the time and um, and also I would really love to learn because there is a lot that I don't know and I'd be happy to devote to learning. And I promise I would be very quick at learning. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else, Mrs. Terry? No, I'm good. All right. okay. Mrs. Kucher, Chairwoman Kucher. I'm Mrs. Okay. Kucher, Chair of the School Committee presently. Thank you for your interest in okay. serving. Um, are there any issues of particular interest or concern for you right now regarding the school district and or school committee? Yes. Um, I have a concern about the rapid um, change in, in landscape. We have a lot of home building going on. So I've already said my piece about capital improvement and, mm -hmm. and projecting enrollment. Um, just coming into the schools, which I haven't been in in years, um, I was a bit disappointed, I want to say, first of all, not by the teachers. They're phenomenal. Again, all of the workers that are there, they're so warm and welcoming. Um, and the teachers that I've witnessed teaching in action just in passing are uh, phenomenal. But as I look in the classrooms, the first thing that is really um, noticeable is that we have very limited technology, and I did ask some questions. Um, that was disheartening to me, because if we're preparing students for the 21st century, um, they are not going to be prepared. My hope is that you do have it all going on at the high school level, um, middle school as well, but they have to have it at the high school level because these kids are ready to go out there. And I know when we did the renovation of the high school and my daughter and son had gone there, that technology was a big part of our discussion and the need for it. And I know they didn't have it after the kids all moved into that big, shiny, beautiful, new you know, um, new and improved high school. Um, I realize that it's very costly, um, that infrastructure may not be able to handle it, and so that will cost money, but there are teaching strategies that most, uh, I would say urban ring students and suburban students are being is exposed to now using technology. There are blended learning strategies that teachers are trained in, and um, what it allows is, number one, children are a lot more engaged. They just, they're stimulated by the technology, as you know. It brings current information right to them immediately. It, they can create presentations with technology. Teachers are able to personalize learning. Most of the curriculum programs now have a digital component, and teachers really are expected. That program is designed so that teachers would um, generate lessons where children would circulate over to the use of technology and be taught lessons specifically on their level and move them along at a, a steady rate. Now, I just want to um, say it's very important that you know, I believe that the teacher is first and foremost your most precious resource and nothing replaces sitting in front of a teacher. Um, that's the first thing. Secondly, um, I have concern about screen time for children. I think there's some research out there that says that that's not a good thing. So I don't want anyone to come away thinking that I'm saying that kids should, especially elementary children, they shouldn't be sitting in front of a computer every minute of the day. But there are whole learning communities going on inside the technical world where children can collaborate with other students from across the world, really. And we're missing out on that. So I would say that that might be something that I would be interested in looking at. And I do know that it's costly, um, but it's certainly worth the investment, and at the very least, to start moving in that direction. Thank you. Hi, Glenn Jefferson, School Committee. Um, so I wanted to touch upon something, though, because you kind of sparked my interest when you made the comment around you know, being retired and have more time to get involved in the day-to-day -day operations, and that really is not the role of a school committee member. We don't get involved in that. We're not supposed to. We have very limited roles and capacity of what it's changed since the every form. So we do very little and we're not meant there to micromanage and say, hey, that principal's not doing something. We're really not even supposed to go into classrooms without being coordinated. So um, 
you know, I understood your intentions on that, but it did kind of, I just wanted to, to bring that up because as much as we all want to think we want to go into schools and do good, we really can't. You know, it's not our place. That's why we have a whole chain of command. Um, do you have a question? Yeah, I'm going into it. Thank and um, what is it? I have to script my original one? Uh, <laughs> but you um, back to your your point on, you know, technology and everything, you know, we all know that's great and, um, you know, we'd all love to see all those things in the schools, but um, with that, what's, um, you know, in your opinion, the, probably the two biggest things that you see facing this district, um, you know, issues, you've seen it actually through since 2002, you've seen the progression, um, what would you categorize as the two biggest issues or concerns that you would have that face this district? Well, as I said, the whole reason for us being here is to educate children and make them um, ready to go out into the, the world, whether it to be go on to higher education or um, into the workforce. So with that, in my view, the, the biggest issue is always um, to make sure that you're meeting the needs of every single student, that the resources are available so that every single student has the opportunity to achieve to their fullest potential in an area that will be good for them. And so there are a whole, there's a whole array of issues that can possibly come up. Um, so I'll just go back to what I had said that, you know, and I'm sure that the district has a very um, alive, strategic plan um, and a budget that is aligned to that. But um, I would say that we do have to be concerned about costs of things like technology, like um, emergency situations or having to add on to facilities. And um, so the biggest issue facing the district so that we don't get into trouble, if you will, or find ourselves in um, a situation that we can't afford would be um, to really engage in that process um, deeply. And I, I don't know if you feel as though I'm working around the issue, but it really is the answer to any issue that you might have in my view. And I would like to say I appreciate that you know the intention that I, I meant um, when I said that as school committee members you would know what's happening in the schools. I think it's extremely important for the community to know what is happening in the schools and what is not happening in the schools so that the school committee can be an advocate for those students. That, to me, is the role of the school committee. And I, I just want to assure you that I'm well aware that of the role of the school committee. And um, certainly, there is a chain of commands. And I always um, respected that. As an administrator, I understood it. And would um, have always appreciate that um, school committee respected mm -hmm. their, their role. So, my intention was to say that I would have more information that I would be able to go and, if invited, serve on committees um, as school committee members or on committees that I served on, um, school committee members were present during building uh, mm -hmm. committee meetings or during budget preparation meetings. I think that, and that is what I would be interested in. So, and they also came out a lot to volunteer for things like our playground building um, projects and things like that. And they were really active in helping to fundraise if there was something that we were raising money for, like technology, we did do that. Um, so anyway. Okay, so like Mingula? Um, I noticed that in several places in your letter that you mentioned concern about the importance of school safety. I was wondering, in your educational career, have you worked in a facility that has a school resource office? Well, um, we did on the elementary level. We did not, but um, last year they had implemented that we had uh, we were supposed to have a community officer um, available to us, one that was more visible in the school. On the elementary level, we had, if you remember the old program, the Dare officers would come mm -hmm. in, um, and then that was went by the wayside. But we always invited. We had. Um, I always had a police officer that I invited in. Um, to install the safety patrols and that kind of thing. But for, for the protection of the school, um, the officers were supposed to be patrolling around our school community. What, what I was really referring to was, are you familiar with 
I, I know we don't have them in elementary schools per se, but we have a resource officer at Dighton Rehoboth. Are you familiar with what that resource officer, whether it's in our facility at the high school or in a high school setting, what they do and how they interact with staff and administration and students? Well, at, in East Providence, that's all that I'm familiar with. I don't know about in Rehoboth, Dighton DR High. Um, they really, um, they have them in the middle schools and at the high school level. Uh, they're very visible at arrival and dismissal. They direct traffic. They do interact with parents and make them follow the trafficking rules. Um, with the students, they are to develop more of a relationship with them so that they can be approachable if there's a problem. So they are visible um, in the hallways, in the lunchroom, and that sort of thing. I know that they kind of put security, I think, at the doors in the high school as well in East Providence but the um, resource offices were really to develop a relationship so that they could be the eyes and the ears of the community and be more proactive now when they have a disturbance I do know that there have been disturbances um, they do um, Lauren take um, over as law officers and um, they I believe they have um, helped with securing the school community. If there was some type of a major disruption, they will act as an officer and the children know that they are police officers and they can be in trouble if they um, go too far. <laughs> Thank you. So my question was, um, why did you wanna apply for the school committee? Um, but instead of making you I feel like you addressed it not only tonight with your answers, but I feel like after having read your um, letter of interest, um, I, it's very clear that you have a passion for education. So I'm actually going to pass to Selectman Pacheco. And thank you, by the way. Yes. I'm kind of in the same situation. Uh, I have the disadvantage of being the seventh person to ask you questions, and all the good, <laughs> good questions are asked already. Uh, and you actually a answered mine. I was concerned about the building needs, future building needs for the school. And you gave me a good answer, so I'm satisfied with your answer, so I don't want to belabor this anymore. But thank you very much. Ms. Barlow, do you mind doing me a favor and asking the other three candidates to come back in? Sure. Thank you. Um, so here's how it's going to work this evening. We are going to have a roll call vote. The, we're going to write down, and it will be public, because we will say who we voted for on a piece of paper, who we're going to vote for. And I think this is the best way that we can have an independent person-by-person -person assessment of who each person feels will be the best to serve on the school committee. My understanding, Madam Administrator, please correct me if I'm wrong, is that the majority vote wins. If we do not have a majority, meaning four individuals voting for the same appointee on that first vote, we will then go to a second vote and a third vote and Until we have like a majority. Just keep going. Okay. <laughs> Is everybody clear? Mr. Jefferson. Not saying anything. Okay. We like that. All right. Do you need pieces of paper? Paper. Karen. Karen is so on top of it. On top. Sorry. Look, I know. I was just going to write it down right here. <laughs> Can you please, on the sheet of paper, <laughs> indicate <laughs> that? No, well, then it will look no fair. Um, can everyone please indicate the number one? This is our first round of voting. We hope it's the only round. Okay. We all going to use this? We don't know. We're doing just one. We're still right now, we're just doing one. First round. This is who you would like to see appointed to the vacant school committee position. Okay. This is not easy. I agree. But thank you, Mrs. Kulak. That's very well, true. I agree. This reminds me of the fire chief meeting we had. <laughs> We're fortunate to have such... And we only had two fire, two candidates for fire chief. So but it was well, with, with that, I was going to say, I mean, mm -hmm. does anyone want to have discussion on it, or is it just, you know, because... I mean, well, I think just if we would vote, and then we can... If, oh. if nobody... If, if there's not a majority, then we can have that debate, lively debate. Okay. Everybody ready? Has everybody voted? Yep. Okay. Board of, Board of Selectmen will reveal their votes first and then we'll move to Mrs. Dingus. And is that okay, Mrs. Terry? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, so it must go. be because I'm the oldest one around. <laughs> no. You were and just looking at me. I'm sorry. <laughs> my, first, my, first choice, my first choice, and I'm probably going to butcher her last name, but it's Jennifer Dukowski. 
Is that the correct pronunciation? Uh, close enough. <laughs> Can you do it for me before I do it? Okay. My vote is for Jennifer Dushkowski. Mine is for Tom O'Connor. Tom O'Connor. Jennifer D. Tom O'Connor. Tom O'Connor. That's four for Tom O'Connor. Mr. O'Connor, congratulations, congratulations, sir. You are our newest school committee member. have a plurality. This well, is just a quick point of, sure. this is more for the public. Um, this is a position that you'll fill out until April, and oh, okay. um, now there will be two seats for the school committee on the ballot. Right. And yeah. For 2019. For correct. 2019, and if you desire to continue, you, you would have to pull papers letter. and get signatures as, as if you were just running for election. Karen, Congratulations. And I just, as school committee chair, would like to thank all of the candidates, and as Mrs. Goulart just alluded to, um, all outstanding candidates. Our community is so very fortunate um, to have the kind of support that we have and people willing to serve. So thank you so very much. And my hope is that you will consider running in that election in the spring. I just want to say thank you. When we've had uh, can it, when we've had positions open on the school committee, it's always the concern: are the incumbents going to run? Because if they don't run, and we don't, you know, is anyone else going to run? So. Uh, it's great to see the interest, Absolutely. and thank you very much. And by the way, we have vacancies on other town committees. <laughs> just we'll be in touch, Mr. Just to have a thing. You put your name in, and then you're poached for everything else. <laughs> what I wanted to say, uh, and I truly, truly mean this, and I feel like you've heard me say this before at that meeting with the fire uh, about the fire chief vacancy. Mm -hmm. um, I truly believe, no matter who won. It was going to be a win for not just the town of Dighton, but also for the regional school district and the kids and the teachers in those schools and the administrators and staff as well. So I thank everybody. Keep plugging away. Um, and congratulations, Mr. O'Connor. Thank, thank you. you. Thank Absolutely, you. sir. Yeah. And if I could just. If I could, yes. if I could just add that we had four excellent candidates, and I would have been satisfied with either one of you. So I appreciate you guys. So volunteering and I looked at your face when you were told you weren't getting paid and nobody panicked so <laughs> nobody ran that was always a good sign so thank you again we could make that a motion though sometime some year <laughs> Mr. Connor, um, you will yes. need to be sworn in unfortunately um, hours are closed at town hall right now so anytime that you can come during normal town hall hours and get sworn in Thank you, sir. Thank you. Absolutely. And thank you, everyone who applied. Absolutely. Thank you. We're very thank lucky. You. Round of applause. Thank and thank you, school committee. It's thank you. Yeah. See you. Yeah. Now you can go and wake Charlie up. Right. <laughs> 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 We're putting him for time and a half. Yep, take it around me. Mr. O'Connor, you'll see the town clerk for that okay. oath of office. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome, welcome yeah. sir. Have a good night, good everyone. Luck. Thank you very much. Stay warm out there. Yeah, it doesn't go with your outfit. Yeah. <laughs> He's wearing shoes though tonight, Mrs. Terry, so baby steps. Thank you. Thank you all. Good night. Very much. Thank you. Thank you all. All right. Okay, Mrs. Brady is still here. All right, at this time, as is customary, we have public input. Is there is some public here tonight, which is great. Does anybody? We will have another chance at the end of the meeting to have public input. But right now, does anybody have anything they'd like to say? Anybody in the audience before we move to the town administrator's reports? Yes, I know the ticking. There's never a moment of silence in this. Yeah, <laughs> so we will work on that. That'll yeah. be in our five-year wish list <laughs> for the board for the department. Oh my goodness. Well, we can accomplish that one. <laughs> Under $50. You'll be on the agenda under acknowledgments. Um, Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. All right. Madam Administrator, you have the floor. Great. So I'm going to jump back to public input. input. Um, quick announcement. We are in need of hired snow plows and drivers. If anybody is interested, we need your help. Please contact Highway Superintendent Tom Ferry. Okay. Town Administrator report. So um, 
I am interested, and uh, the town accountant and I worked on this a little bit together, but we want to start an internship program for the, for the town. Um, there is a significant deficit in qualified personnel. This is a generational thing across Massachusetts. And if we start a program here, we can do our part to help um, give students some serious and appropriate experience in the municipal field. So this is a proposal in the interest of time. I will not be offended if you'd like to table this and uh, vote on this at the next meeting, or you can vote on it now, but. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll sure. make a motion that we take the proposal for an internship program under advisement, that we review it and uh, place it on the agenda for the next meeting. I'll second that motion. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? I just want to mention that as a follow-up to that meeting that I went to at Fort Devens when we talked about the lack of qualified um, municipal employees, there's an article in this month speaking from mm -hmm. MMA talking about that need. So this is very timely. Right. And um, on the money. The, it's the accounting field, uh, which is funny because that came up tonight, um, treasurer collector and town administrator. Which it's, is it's the financial end, yep, management, yep. Thank you very much. You're very uh, the other item I have here, well, I have five of them. But, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. We need vote. to vote on the taking under advisement. <laughs> yes. So we have a motion uh, and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it. That motion passes. Madam Administrator. Thank you. Um, we have, just as a reminder, we have asked our departments to submit to us their five-year wish lists. Um, this is, you know, from practical to pie in the sky. Um, we have had the gamut, which I love reading them. Um, they're not all in yet, so this is a friendly reminder if you're watching at home. Any department heads, uh, send in your five-year plans. I have submitted a quite ambitious five-year wish list um, with 12 items. <laughs> uh, so hopefully we can get to at least half of them. Um, but I'm hopeful that some of my visions will actually reappear on some other plans, and some of them have, that's actually happened. So that's really great news. It shows we're all on the same page. I did receive one from Chairman Zagrafis. I didn't know if, oh. I'm going to amend that oh, because sure. for whatever reason, when we discussed this, I had confused the word five the phrase five year with five bullet points. I think so your years are small, yeah. Five things on that, and then I heard that she had 12, so um, I will revise that. Okay. Um, is it your intention to receive five Well, year that was my question. It actually wasn't, but I'm welcome to your five year plans. My thought was that we would review everybody's mm -hmm. and develop an actual five year, seven year, 10 year plan from everybody's sort of ideas. But we, if you'd like when to. When we discuss this, my understanding was this board, as individuals, we could make a list, but we were going to hold it. Yep. And after you uh, collected all the other ones and we got a complete list, right. we would see how close they were to what we had. And any that we had that mm -hmm. weren't on mm -hmm. the, the collated list, mm -hmm. right. we would add to it. Okay. That was my so let's we, do we that. We didn't want to. Mm -hmm. We wanted the, the board's department to actually come up with this. Yeah. We didn't want to in any way influence anything their that decisions. they might do. Or they might Great. think, I don't have to do it because the selectmen will do it. Right. Mm -hmm. So they're due, um, I guess for you, they're mm -hmm. due at uh, the next department head meeting from the department heads. And then um, there will always be some stragglers. So we'll just wait for those to come in. But um, maybe our second or our second meeting in December might be a mm -hmm. nice target um, for that. So anyway, just something to think about. And thank you to everyone who has submitted uh, we have a nice, robust plan from the veterans agent, which was nice to see. Okay, um, tuition reimbursement policy. So you have in your packet a policy that came up um, based upon, if you remember, we had a firefighter take an interest in getting some uh, tuition reimbursement. So I am going to ask um, you to vote on something in a minute, but this policy is an update from a policy that we found from 1991. So I did send it over to the Policy Review Board. They uh, refused to meet in a, in a good way. They said that there was no need. So I shouldn't have said it that way, sorry. <laughs> um, so this is a formal submission of an, an update to this policy. Sure. And my request tonight is mm -hmm. that we vote to have the town reimburse Mr. Alex Green for his tuition fees 
that were related with his tuition and books for his pre-approved course. We already voted on that, as I recall. Specifically, Not the, fees. the fees I need uh, voted. The contract specif okay. s specifies tuition and books, is silent on fees. Mm -hmm. Due to the conversation at the meeting, I was under the impression, and I still am under the impression, that tuition fees would be included. We found this policy. It exempted fees. So this is a... Well, of course that's what we intended because right. when you go to school and you take courses, half of the cost is, is are the fees. fees. So, and in this case, it's anyway, more than we'll, half. But we'll, we'll vote. So this new policy will address that. Vote. Correct, okay. yes. So the highlights of the, I mean, we can read it if you'd like, um, but the highlights are imposing, you know, every, it's available for everyone, what you have to do, you need to get your approvals, you need to get it budgeted. It's a $1,000 limit per class and a $3,000 limit per person per fiscal year, which I think is fair. If you're working and you're going to school and you take three classes a year, bravo to you. And um, that's that's your cover, three thousand dollars. I I will make one request. We usually do do three readings, so I know that that's kind of hard with having two meetings a month. So I would just request that if you're asking this board to vote on this policy this evening, that we at least read it once. Oh, and I'm I'm actually not. I wrote revisions because okay. that's when they were submitted. Gotcha. Um, the approval date's still blank. Okay. So I, I actually really like the three reading mm -hmm. rule, mm -hmm. and I don't want to break it because it's in another policy. Right. So. <laughs> three reading, but not the actual reading. Yeah, right. we just give right. it. So. Okay, just so can we do our first reading this Yes, reading? absolutely. Okay. Well, do you want us to vote on Alex Green? I would love for you to vote on Alex Green's well, we'll situation. Do, before we read it, we'll, yes. we'll I want to make a motion that we pay the fees uh, that Alex Green mm -hmm. spent for his uh, school. Okay, friendly, friendly amendment, required fees, because that's what we put in the policy. That's that was right. part of the, um, that was part of what was left out of the original one. Required fees, meaning the institution is requiring these. Mm -hmm. well, so I will fees, say whatever fees, amendment. I mean. Right. Yep, that's fine. Okay, we'll pay the required fees. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Yeah, I second that. Oh, okay. With that Sorry. friendly amendment. So we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it. That motion passes. And I do just want to thank Mr. Green for taking us, taking the town up on that offer. Thank you for that vote. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Madam Women. Okay. <laughs> so the title of this policy is Use of the Tuition Reimbursement Budget 920 and Eligibility Guidelines. The original policy um, that we found was November 13th, 1991, almost to the day. A few years later, we're revising it. Background, the town of Dighton values education and supports its employees advancing their education as it relates to their positions for the town. The town has established budget 920 tuition for use by town employees who have received approval from their department head and the board of selectmen under certain restrictions. The purpose, uh, purpose and applicability. The purpose of this policy is to promote an educated workforce and develop employees so that the town receives the highest quality work and productivity on behalf of its citizens. This policy shall apply to all employees, both union and non-union. Any collective bargaining agreements that provide tuition reimbursement as part of the conditions of said agreements shall prevail. When questions arise as a result of that language or when contracts are silent on a specific issue, the town shall use this policy to determine a course of action. Policy, item one, the employee must request and receive prior approval of the department head and the board of selectmen before registration and attendance at class, at class or classes. Two, the town must have appropriated funds in the budget for any employee to be eligible for reimbursement. Three, the course or courses must be related to the position and or department of the employee. Four, the reimbursement will be paid upon successful completion of the courses or course. Employees must provide detailed proof of payment and a valid transcript demonstrating successful completion. Employees must maintain a C average or better to be eligible for reimbursement. Item five, eligible reimbursement shall be limited to tuition, books, and required fees specific to the course being taken. There shall be no exceptions. Six, there shall be a cap of $1,000 per course per employee. There shall be a fiscal year cap of $3,000 per employee. Courses must be taken during the employee's off-duty hours and all assigned work as a result of the course must be completed during the employee's off-duty hours. Thank you. The end. Very much. Good, um, good work on that. Thank you. Improving upon the original. We like that. I do have a question regarding sure. this, yes, though. If, if somebody gets their degree and we've paid for uh, 
several courses, whatever, and they get their degree, and then they leave the town employee. Mm -hmm. Do we, does the town get reimbursed on any of these fees? We, there's nothing in writing that allows that. Is that, would the board be interested in having something as part of this policy that if they uh, get their degree and then they work for the town so many years, get their degree and they leave shortly after that, that the town should be reimbursed some of the fees that the town has paid? I don't know any place that does that. Uh, yeah, my other, my, my initial, th and I understand why that's a concern of yours, and I don't begrudge that at all. I, t I get it. That was actually it's a like question that I had. like we're investing in them. Correct. And my other thing is, I, I, I get, understand I get we that. want them okay. to stay here, mm -hmm. but I also care about having educated, professional, mm -hmm. professionally developed individuals out in the world, whether they're in Dighton or not. So I'm okay with um, not asking for a reimbursement. Are you okay with that? Yeah, it, it, the tuition assistance or reimbursement is like an incentive for employees. And as I said, I don't know any place that does it. I mean, all the years I was in the school department, we uh, assisted uh, teachers with uh, higher degrees. And, you know, um, they have an opportunity to move on or move up in, to an administrative position somewhere. No, so no, I. All, all more power to them is how I feel. About I, the that. main thing is, I think our intent was: can we get people, employees, to take notice of this and start going to school? Mm -hmm. It's because it's a great benefit. And the course does have to be really. I mean, there are some protections. There's a fiscal cap, a fiscal year cap. Mm -hmm. There's a per course cap. Mm -hmm. It has to be approved by the department head and the board of selectmen. And work related. And budgeted and related. So there's a handful of stipulations. So there's some. But I do understand that concern. And I think if there's a problem, we amend our policy. Oh, it's yeah, a great thing about course. a policy. Yeah, these are living documents right. that can be changed. So that was our first reading. It'll be up online. And uh, we'll see you in two weeks with it again. <laughs> okay, so my second question. Yeah, sure. Pacheco. Yeah, this uh, original policy was back in 1991, and I understand that you weren't aware of this policy. I was so not. Where this do we wasn't keep in the policy book either? Yes, yeah, so I'm concerned about that. Mm -hmm. Don't we have, when she became town administrator, or I became selectman, mm -hmm. shouldn't we have been given a, a binder of all these policies and not mm -hmm. have this sprung on us well, they, later there on? There is a. That is a Totally valid question. There is a policy book in there. The problem is that even if you had that policy book, this wasn't going to be in there anyway. So yes, but I, why I, wouldn't it have been in there though? I didn't make that. No, I, know I, I think, I think the, the, our biggest flaw is the lack of stability. So you would come in new and not like us, not know about it and have no reason to figure it out. We figured it out, why? Because Alex Green decided to go to school. <laughs> so um, it's something I'm working on. I take it very seriously. I was very frustrated that, surprise, there's something else. Um, I don't like operating without all the information. And um, I agree with you wholeheartedly, and I'm working on that it so it doesn't happen again. It came about because a question came up about the fees. No, I, I know why. I just don't know why uh, she was a maid. The paper is so yellow. <laughs> It's courier font, like a typewriter. Yeah. So my plan so, is, I'm going to can I make a yes. broad statement that might address yeah. your concern. Mm -hmm. I just think that before we had a town administrator who took it upon herself to assist the board in developing an actual policy manual, that policies were made by votes at the board of selectmen at random meetings, and they were never actually on paper. And that also can cause mm. for confusion, because if you don't remember that in the minutes somewhere, someone took a vote to set a yeah. policy, well, my you know, it's, it's yeah. tough to figure out. My concern is that somebody did have this policy, and why weren't we made aware of this policy? That's, so I think in the future, if any department head or any department has policies that we're not aware of, we should be notified of this. So mm -hmm. I don't know if a letter needs to go out to all the department heads, but we need to. I think we can ask the town administrator if it's okay with my colleagues to send out a mem sure. memorandum and ask if you are aware of a policy that relates to your department or some function of your department, can you please forward it to us? I think that's very valid. I think we have people in the audience with questions. Uh, sure, well, yeah, of no, course. Was, you just uh, made the, the that I was going to make, and I would also suggest that when you have the department heads or whoever uh, dig out their existing policies, they could be scanned in 
also and, and put on one database for everyone to review. But mm -hmm. I agree. You know, you shouldn't walk in cold. I mean, and, and I understand the situation, particularly with the votes, et cetera. And this may be a long-term project mm -hmm. for perhaps another intern. <laughs> No, seriously. They're voting on that in two weeks. <laughs> I have to think about this for a minute. Mm -hmm. You know, so much time is spent reinventing the wheel. Maybe we should go back to the original wheel, find out where they are, and, mm -hmm. and, and scan them in, and, and have a booklet of all of them, and say, okay, let's take a fresh look. What needs to be improved? Mm -hmm. What needs to be thrown out? Mm -hmm. and, and go forward with that. So I, you know, I agree. That's, that's exactly that's what I would suggest. That's just exactly what we are doing. Um, it's just I didn't have all the policies to review, so no, I started I with that. Right? No, no, I know. But, but, you know, but it's a good plan. I agree with it. From this point forward, right. you know, mm -hmm. start with asking the department heads to say, "Tell, send us what you've got, and, and go from there." Spot on. Good, thank you. As always. <laughs> sure. Sorry. I just wanted to speak to Mr. Pacheco's first point. It actually, I can't speak for municipalities, but it actually is very, very common uh, through human resources to have a candidate who, who is asking for push reimbursement to have to sign that they're committing to staying on for an additional year. It's actually a very, very common practice. Um, I, don't, I don't know why it would be different for municipalities, mm -hmm. employees, employees. Um, so, so, you know, as someone had said it's, they have heard of it, but it's, it's yeah. actually very common, so. I guess my question wasn't, my concern wasn't that I hadn't heard of it. My question was more like, okay, so someone, we, we assisted paying some, some of someone's courses. They go on to another town. We invested, I don't know, $2,000, and now we're asking for it back, and they refuse to give it back. Like, are we going to go to court over $2,000? I personally don't think that's worth it. I'm sorry, I just don't. And I feel like we want to invest in our employees with the hope that they would stay because they see that, they're supported here and they can grow. Um, but I understand that. It's right. not unheard of to ask right. for that. I just feel like the enforcement would be the problem. Like a five-year commitment mm -hmm. one right. year. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. So not that's not something that yeah. we, we can consider that. We'll, we'll see if there's language out there. Anybody else in the audience? Thank you. All right. So, can you, Pichico, did you have any other comments, questions? That's it. Okay. The floor is still yours now. Sorry, I'm just writing down no, no, tuition no, clawback so I can remember to mm -hmm. do that. Okay. Um, oh, this is an exciting part. So um, we have a business coming to town. You may have heard of them, One Connection. They have come to two town meetings. We have our zoning bylaws all set. They are going through the permitting process with the planning board right now, and we are part of the way for them to keep going at the state with their permitting for medicinal marijuana and adult use marijuana. So they need us to approve these host community agreements. I negotiated these with um, their attorney, Mr. Valero Romano, who would be here, but he is out of state right now, so he does apologize. Um, there are two separate host community agreements. The first one in your packet is for adult use. The second one is for medicinal. You have previously looked at the medicinal one. However, when we found out that they were going to be having an adult use arm of their business, I went back and um, I asked for some other provisions, such as allowing the police department to have inspectional resources, uh, not resources, but inspection opportunities prior to their opening, um, having them be privy to, sorry, I wrote down all my notes and now I've shuffled my papers and I can't find them. Okay, take um, your time. Having the opportunity to review any security plans, breach plans, they have to, um, through this agreement, they are forced to cooperate with any aspect of our municipality um, at all. Board of Health, us, whatever. Um, the highlights include $25,000 each at the start of their dispensing. I asked when they thought this might be because I'm very interested in revitalizing a drug. Uh, it's funny you mentioned DARE earlier tonight, um, a drug abuse prevention program. Um, so we had a fantastic meeting with Dr. Joe this morning. Um, we have a lot of great ideas. It's student education, it's parent education, which I'm a parent of two young kids. I don't know anything about drugs and I need help. Just and don't do this, them. Just don't do them, but <laughs> when my kids are trying to pass one over Say on me, no. they're probably gonna succeed right. if I don't educate myself. Mm -hmm. um, so parent programs, a program called Hidden in Plain Sight, which I thought was very cool and I can't stop talking about today, but basically they set up a, like a room and they teach you what to look for for 
in your kids' room, not that we want to spy on them, but, you know, to notice if something awry may be happening. So different programs like that that focus on everybody's education, not just the schools. Um, so we get that money, which I would be able to be poured into our pilot program on the Dighton side, um, which the school system has agreed to start. We're targeting uh, September 1st, 2019. So we're very excited about that. Um, this is not a payment in lieu of taxes. I just would like everybody to be clear on that. We will be taxing this business at our rate of 2732 or whatever it was that we set. Um, we will be receiving- 2752. No, thank you. 20 cents matter. <laughs> yeah, 20 cents does matter. Um, and they will be taxed just like every other business in this town. But plus the 3%. Well, the, but this is in lieu of the 3%. No. But, no, it's 25. No. My understanding of reading this is $25,000. And 14 months later, they're going to tell us, they're going to give us the 3% minus the $25,000. Correct. Right. Right. For the first year, because we're getting it up front. The, so it is kind of in lieu. I mean, we're getting the money up front, but we're not getting... No, no. Hold on, what are you asking? We're not, get, we're not getting 20... Taxes. Yeah. To, I, I understand the taxes, but I'm talking about the 3% that we, we're going to get from them. So we're getting $25,000 up front. Mm -hmm. 14 months later, after we get the 25000 Whatever 3% of their whatever gross 3 sales was, minus $25,000. Minus $25,000. Mm -hmm. So right. it's not like we're getting 25 plus 3%. Three, 3%. Right. And it's 25 each, so it's a total of 50. Correct. Yeah, but okay. each one's going to be treated mm -hmm. differently. Different, yeah. So At one location, too, by the way. One location. What would happen if it's less than $25,000? Are we reimbursing? They you owe it to us by agreement. Of, they owe it to us, so then they've the made their system. payment for the year. Correct. Not no, this. oh no, they have to pay that. Um, so we get the twenty-five thousand dollars each, so a total of fifty. On the adult use side, a three percent excise tax was put in place by the voters at town meeting in July, June, excuse me. So we get that, and then the taxation. Dighton residents have a hiring preference. If everything is else, everything else is equal, the Dighton resident prevails. Dighton area businesses get preference over providing services to this this business. So if they need to put in cameras, or if they need to put in electrical stuff, Dighton area. So if if we have a person that lives in Berkeley, but they mm -hmm. have a business in Dighton, they would be chosen. If we have a person that lives in Dighton and they do business in Berkeley, they would be chosen um, just by being in close proximity to Dighton. Go ahead. Who monitors that? Who, who makes sure that they're buying? They have to provide an annual, I feel like this is a quiz, I like it. Um, <laughs> they have to provide an annual report to the town per this agreement, and this that would all be listed. Okay. And that would all be listed. Um, we are very, I am very much interested in creating a partnership with this business and not just being this big bad town that's going to take everything. So I've asked for them to, when we do have these assemblies, when we do have these programs, if somebody on their staff has some sort of expertise in an area, they would be provided to us to enrich that program in some way. Um, a partnership with the Dighton Police Department with pre inspections before opening or at any time, security plans as I mentioned. Um, they have to participate in all aspects of the municipality to address the languages, address any concerns. So it's very broad. Um, and other than that, it's just your, your regular um, yeah, a lot legalese, of it is but the same as the last time that we right. asked them. I kept to the come here. changes, the uh, track changes in here, so you can mm -hmm. see exactly what was different. Um, but we did increase our the fee that we originally negotiated uh, because having this other aspect is going to impact us more greatly. But and they were okay with it. So okay with it. we asked, they answered, mm -hmm. everybody's happy. Um, I suspect that there are questions, comments from the audience, so I would just ask my colleagues, oh, absolutely. <laughs> I'm gonna ask for the Board of Selectmen to ask their questions of the town administrator about this, um, and then we'll take comments, questions, concerns from the public. Selectman, who are? I have the same question that uh, uh, Selectman Pacheco had. Why would we return the 25000 We're not returning it. That's, we don't it's return it. Answer. A lump sum payment out of 25000 so forth, so on. But then under B, it says the first recurring annual payment, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> shall be reduced by 25,000. So they're saying, so they give us every year 3% of their gross sales. I said, I would like blankety blank, I, mean, I actually started with a higher figure, I would like this amount up front. And he said, I'll do that if it can be borrowed against the 3%. Because mind you, they're just opening, they have made no money, they've invested in their business, they've spent a ton of money out. So for them to give a payment right away puts them in the red immediately. 
So they're looking to borrow, essentially, borrow against the amount that they owe. And I'm fairly confident that 3% is going to be above and beyond 25000 So it's not a return. If they it's made, not a if return. Three, I'm making this up. If they made, if 3% of the annual gross sales in the first year is $100,000, again, completely okay. made up public, they would deduct the 50000 from that, and then they would give, give us, us $50,000 50, more. So it's why, only year we, one that this So ended. how is it being interpreted that that's a return of money? I don't know. I don't return more it money. that way. That's the opposite right. of a return. Yeah, the first recurring annual payment wording. shall be reduced. It's the way it's wording. By, well, I understood the it. The first the recurring wording. annual payment shall be reduced by 25000 to account for the initial lump sum payment. I think that's clear. Yeah, you, you answered my question. Okay. I wanted to know if we had to re give them the money no. back and we don't have to give them the money back. What's that? Oh. A lump sum payment in the amount of $25,000 due and payable on the date that the company begins dispensing adult use marijuana. Mm -hmm. And then it says recurring annual payments and the recurring annual payments will be 3% of their gross sales. Every year for five years. So. On the B, if their gross sales are $100,000, we're going to get $33,000. We're going to get $3,000. How much are we going to get? $33,000. No, that's a third. We're going to get $3,000? If their gross sales are $100,000, I mean, that's going to be like a month for them. Yeah, if the, for the $25,000, they have to sell $833,000 and Three hundred and thirty three dollars and thirty three cents worth too many you have a I know there's too many threes in this scenario. <laughs> That's, and I anticipate that they're gonna they're gonna sell more than that. This stuff is in expensive. both facilities, <laughs> the medical use as well as the recreational use. So I I, I was just concerned that we may have to return some money, but you're telling me we don't have to. We wouldn't even be obligated, and, even if they failed. Right. We would keep that money we wouldn't regardless be obligated. Of Right, if and then I also added in a provision in here because if they failed mid-year, so I'm like, I don't want to miss out on concern. any revenue. Yes. And um, if they close, they have to give us their last payment within a certain amount of time. And we're getting the $25,000 up front right. versus waiting for them to give us a 3% over the course of the, uh, exactly. the year. So, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm going by each individual because uh, mm -hmm. I think one's going to be up and running before the other one is. Sure. So. Absolutely. Okay, under two terms and termination, um, kind of midway down, the municipality may terminate this agreement at any time during the term of this agreement. The company shall not be required to cease operations following the termination of this agreement. If the agreement is terminated, how do we get our 3%? You don't, which is why you probably wouldn't terminate, terminate your agreement unless they were really but, egregious. But but that's my point. The town should, it, as a party to the contract, the town should, if you terminate a contract, I don't want to lose 3%. I, I'm, the wording is what I question here. Termination clauses okay, you so have in every contract, but I really think that if we're going to allow them to come into town and we terminate a contract for just cause, they right, can you still want operate. to be able to terminate the contract. We're the town. We want to be able to have the most flexibility. So we, it says may. We but may the company terminate this. Shall it's also not, super broad. It doesn't give right, any terms. The company shall not be required to cease operations following right. the termination of the agreement. If the agreement protects the town, so we get our 3%, yeah. and that contract is terminated, how do we continue to get 3%? You wouldn't because it's in the agreement. But if that's you my terminate. point. They're still operating. They're still selling. But we still we, want the 3%. I think she's saying we wouldn't choose to terminate the agreement. Something terrible has to happen for us to terminate the agreement. Like we can't fund the, the drug abuse program. I don't know. I, I can't, can't even think of something of why I would terminate this agreement. It says that we may. So that's a, pl a pro for the town because it gives us some flexibility. You're not bound. The following one is a pro for the business because they're like, fine, if you're going to terminate this agreement and it's your choice, we're still going to operate. And not give you and the 3%. And not give you the 3%. So it makes no makes sense, sense for the, it's a protection for them, yeah. but it ends up being a benefit to us because we get 3% of their money. You know what I mean? All I'm saying is, that the way that's worded right now, it leans to the benefit of the company. I want. I want, I want an equitable agreement for the town. If we ever have to terminate the agreement for some, something horrendous, 
I don't think they should be allowed to operate and not pay us the 3%. That's all I'm saying. As long as we're mutually bound by a contract, that's a scary clause. Is David, has David yes. K reviewed this? Yes, and he was okay with it. I don't, I can't, I'm not seeing it how you're seeing it. We've zoned it, so now they can be there by right. By Chapter 94G, we have to have a host community agreement. Mm -hmm. This allows us the opportunity for any reason to get out of the agreement if we can't uphold our end. And it just means we can't shut their business down, but legally we can't shut their business down anyway. So I'm not, I don't see how it leans against the town. You don't get the 3%. But, if we're but you only we get the 3% that. by having this agreement. Mm -hmm. And that's the only way you're allowed to get the 3% by the state. So you wouldn't terminate the agreement. And if something horrendous happens, the state's going to close them down. Exactly. Yeah. They'll I mean, revoke the their license. The Plus, we, we, our Board of Health, has been very active in developing mm -hmm. regulations. So we have that protection as well. And the planning board will be able to do all their stipulations. So we have multiple. Well, and the Board of Health has their permitting process right, as well. Right, exactly. So I another don't question. What are the fees that we're going to get besides assuming the 3% and the 25000 What are the kind of fees? And if we take this action tonight, if the planning board and the health board and any other board that may regulate this somehow has not completed everything, are we Null abridging their authority? Null and void, no. If they don't get their license from the state, if they don't get their permits through the municipality, it's null and void. Mm -hmm. We don't get our money, right. but they don't open. Exactly. So do, you know, do we know what additional fees we would collect? For example, I don't if know if they've actually been set yet by the Board of Health and what the permit was it like a hundred or something? Time. Like they were discussing them and right. hashing them out, but they would get a separate. So you're going to get a license fee, fee from right. them so plus a filing fee, fee right? Inspection the planning fees. board is getting their fees. fees, right, for filing with them. Um, so all your normal permitting fees, mm -hmm. and then this is a, a little bonus. I do just want to add before, and I, I'm going to call on uh, former Selectman Perry in just a moment. I want to add. I understand our job is to advocate for the financial end and the um, sort of benefit of the town. We do not have enough businesses in town right now. So I really just believe that we really don't have the luxury of saying you're not paying enough, you're not paying enough. Because if we turn this down, we get absolutely zero. Do you know what 3% of zero is? Zero. Selectman Perry. I, just to follow up, if I may, I don't want to interject this point, mm -hmm. law, I was bringing it up, and I don't know what the contract says, but <clears throat> if you, it, it, does the contract just involve the 3% and nothing else? Or does it involve the whole agreement with this firm? The whole the, agreement. Oh, it's lengthy. Well, the reason I ask is, it's lengthy. I mean, you're focusing on the 3%. I, I sort of step back a little mm -hmm. bit. If the contract is terminated by the town, does it also terminate all those other provisions, so like, such as with the police inspections? Yes, yes. everything so, so it's not only the 3%, but it's basically oversight that the town has if, if the contract is terminated. Is that correct? Right. That, that's yes. the bigger picture. Yes. Okay, thank you. That. Okay. There's one other section I wanted to mention, six mm -hmm. local taxes. What uh, section? Is six. It? Six. Local oh, six. I'm sorry you said that. At all times during the term of this agreement, property, both real and personal, owned or operated by the company, shall be treated as taxable, mm -hmm. and all applicable real estate and personal property taxes for that property shall be paid either directly by the company or by its landlord, and neither company nor its landlord should object, shall object or otherwise challenge the taxability of such property. I don't want a landlord involved. Our tax, it's clear from what we do in taxing, and I'll use solar farms. It is the owner of the property, the real estate. It is the owner of the personal. To allow a landlord to get in here who is not a signatory to this contract, I think it should only be the company. We only want to deal with the company, not the landlord. because. I mean, when I saw that, I thought, I'm looking at this. You're making a third party, a landlord, a party to the contract. They don't sign the contract. We, we should only be dealing with the company. I, I disagree with you uh, respectfully. The landlord has to pay because 
They're paying right now. That they own the property. Correct. They're the owner of record. Their a lien would be placed on them. Like for this aside, they have to pay their taxes. There's plenty sure. of. This makes sure that the town gets its tax so, money. Someone right. is this, okay. is, this is a provision Correct. specifying that they are a taxable business, a taxable entity. And I personally want this in here, bound, bind them by this agreement so that in three years when the lobbyists have said Chapter 94G is unfair, they're taking 3% of our money, it's too much, these towns are not spending I'm basically giving them their platform right now. The towns are not spending all of this money that they're receiving. I want them to have to pay their taxes so that some lobbyist doesn't succeed and take hey, away our tax money. But the company is who we're doing business with, not yes. the landlord. And what I'm saying, the landlord it would be an agent of the company. It is the, only the company that we, we would hold on this. Now, the company can say to the landlord, write out a check and go pay those taxes to the town of Dayton. Uh -huh. All I'm saying to you is, by inserting our landlord, you're making a third party part of this contract, and we are not negotiating with that, and there's no signatory line. This is part of the situation we've been under sold. Right, and I thought of that specifically when I read this. And I think this is actually a pro for the town and helps the town because it says, we're gonna collect our tax money, and if the company fails to pay it, the landlord's gonna pay up. I don't, we don't care what their side agreement is. I'm, I'm sorry, no, Nancy, but I just respectfully disagree with you. the landlord is not agreeing to that because there's no signatory here. Only parties to the contract can well, do this. They, they have to pay taxes. Not the landlord, the property owner. That's the company, what that's what I'm saying. No, the property owner has to pay taxes. If they don't have an agreement with the company, if the, comp the company may very well negotiate and say, we're gonna pay, you know, as part of leasing this building, we're gonna pay the taxes on it. But if they don't, then the landlord has to pay. It's like any business in town, they're leasing the building. Uh, we don't negotiate the taxes or anything like that. We, we still give them a liquor license. We don't say, oh, by the way, you, you gotta pay the taxes, not the landlord. It's the same, as far as I'm concerned, well, what we do the with the thing. taxes are the, the personal property taxes are paid by the person who owns the personal property. And the real estate mm. taxes are paid by right. the person that owns the real estate. So what I'm saying is there is no obligation. If the company and the landlord are the same, then there's not a problem. Right. But the word nor its landlord, that's the problem. If you or don't make land. these two to or. nor. Well, the word nor is here. Also, or and nor. The, the fact that there's another party who may not be the owner listed in here. That's what my problem is, because the same thing we're dealing with with solar. I want, I want whoever owns the personal property to pay the taxes, and I want whoever owns the real estate to pay the taxes. If it's one and the same, then that party will pay all the taxes. It's but not the problem is with landlord. That's, that's my problem. I, I just I want think, someone to pay the taxes. Right, so I, I this provision, the way I read it, and David Gay did review this, but I can put it in front of him again. They have to pay us. No, we don't need to put it in front of town council again. They have reviewed this, and they reviewed the one, which was the boilerplate for this, from back in March. Mr. You just answered my question. I hear you guys going back and forth. Like, don't we have an attorney that can look at this? They have. I mean, you guys are all they really smart on the board of selectmen, but this is a legality question. Correct. And, all right, so the attorney already We wouldn't chance it, Mr. But I will also <laughs> tell you that we have an agreement that has been approved by town council, and tomorrow morning we're meeting with town council because we have concerns about what he's already approved, and we just want to talk with him. Not this agreement, something sure. else. So uh, usually what happens is when something comes before the board, if there are questions from the board, then once more that particular issue goes to town council and we say, clarify this so for us. you have concerns, but there's no precedent for this. You just have concerns. The attorney has never actually said there's a concern with saying landlord versus actual property owner. Because the question has been asked and the question has sure. been arisen, but we no want to protect the town. Oh, no, it's how, I don't know if you want to call it, it's what we've always done. Okay. Okay. Good Does anybody in the audience have any additional questions, comments, concerns, anything? Sure. Yes, absolutely, sir. Um, <laughs> my concern. Uh, at two uh, separate town meetings. Uh, the residents of this town uh, did, wrote in various approvals to allow this to happen. And within those approvals and uh, within those votes, the townspeople also agreed to 
rules, regulations, parameters, etc. <clears throat> and I just want the board boards to ensure that the will of the people in those rules, regulations, and parameters are followed to the letter. Okay? No, we shouldn't allow, for instance, some one of the rules or parameters was the business has to be 500 feet from something. We shouldn't say, well, you know, we really need the revenue. 250 feet is great. The townspeople voted on those things, and the rule and the, the will of the people should be followed to the letter. Mm -hmm. I 100%. 100%. Right, right, each and every board, each yep. and every elected and appointed official. That is true, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, if someone wanted to change the language and make the distance that an RMD needed to be from something else, as you said, my understanding is it would have to go back to the people. So the people... Well, that, 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 that's, no. that's not true. What we actually voted on, I, I believe, anyway, is that the planning, if they asked for a waiver in the distance from residential, Correct. it's gonna go to the planning board. The question was whether it should go to the zoning board or the planning board, it was agreed by the town, town's people, that it will go to the planning board. So there can be a variance. We have no control over that, but the planning board can say you can be closer to the residents. That, that's the concern mm -hmm. in that the, the, uh, the townspeople voted on various parameters, mm -hmm. and I agree they also voted that it would allow it to go to the Board of Appeals. Mm -hmm. But planning board. things can't be driven by what's, you know, revenue and this and that. And the, the first consideration needs to be what the townspeople voted on, okay? First and mm -hmm. foremost. Mm -hmm. I, I misunderstood your question. I'm sorry. I thought you were saying if we wanted to change the language of that bylaw to be, no, no, then you would have to go back right. to the board. Yeah. I, I, I apologize. apologize. And, you know, I, I appreciate and I admire everyone that's on every board. I have the greatest <laughs> respect. But again, what should drive each and every board is what the townspeople voted on because that's what they want. Absolutely. I appreciate that very much. Um, before we take a vote in either direction, does anybody else from, um, on this dais have anything else they'd like to add? Um, I'll go systematically. Selectman Goulart. Uh, no, I, I, I just want a, uh, what I would be looking for is if we tentatively approve this tonight, since um, Attorney Gay is going to be here tomorrow, that one particular clause uh, about taxes could be clarified. I think. Selectman Um I'm ready to vote on it, so I don't have any additional questions. Madam so. Administrator. I have no other You comments. don't get a vote, so it's important you get the last word. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's appropriate, and correct me if I'm wrong, we do it one by one, correct? Mm -hmm. What do you mean? This agreement, then that agreement. Correct. For votes, not together. Okay. Right. And I do it, so because it's confusing, yeah. there's two different bodies of oversight at the state level. So um, I have something for you to sign if you do approve the adult use community sure. agreement, and that's right sure. here. Before I accept motions, I just wanted to tell my colleagues, what I'm prepared to vote on tonight is not a tentative agreement on these. I'm prepared to take a vote, yes or no, and then we can still run it by town council after. And it's already been run by town council, both last March and then again, with the newer revamped versions. Is there a clause, I believe there's a clause in here that says that the, that the attorney, our turn, the town attorney will review this even after the sign, is that, am I correct on um, that? It was in the, well, I made that point very clear when I was negotiating, but um, I think so, we may put I, it I in there. I had trouble you finding it, but I it thought I read it earlier. Yeah, 13, sorry. Severability. Severability, or? Is that what you're speaking of, yeah. Sakman Pacheco, or are you talking about? No, yeah, I think that, I think that covers no, it. It says to be held no, invalid, illegal, or No, that's that not what severability means. It just means that the agreement stands. Like, if there was one minor issue in the agreement, the whole agreement wouldn't be null and void. It would yeah, just okay, be that yeah. one clause. But I have no problem speaking with David about that one paragraph, though I know that he did approve it. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's, it's a protection a of, of, the a, of a legal, a legal clause it's a question of binding the town with something that 
I personally feel is questionable. And I only want to know uh, and have the opportunity to specifically address this with town council. As I said, on another issue, we have a tentative agreement that town council has approved. Uh, Mrs. Ehrenstein and I have looked at it, and another person in town, uh, department head who's involved, and we looked at it, and it got revised in the, went to town council, and it came back, and we're meeting with town council tomorrow because of some of the recommendations he made. We, we don't accept, and we need to talk to him and explain to him why. So that's why I'm only looking for clarification on this. Accepting motions. I'm going to make a motion that we approve the host community agreement for the siting of the adult use marijuana business in the town of Dighton with One Connection Corporation. As submitted. As submitted. I'll step down and second that motion. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Abstentions? The ayes have it. That motion passes. Is that, that was for both? No, that was for adult use. Okay. Okay. Business today. If you could We're please trying. have Brett, uh, excuse me, Chairman Zagrafis sign where the sign here sticker is. Brett, who's Brett? <laughs> I'm still accepting motions. I'm going to make a, mo uh, a motion that we approve the host community agreement for the siting of the registered marijuana dispensary in the town of Dighton with One Connection Corporation. I'm going to step down and second that motion. Further discussion? I just want to say that this, although we didn't fully discuss this agreement, it's very similar, mm -hmm. if not the same, a little ch couple of changes uh, as the agreement that we just approved. That is true. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Abstentions? The ayes have it. That motion passes. Good work, everyone. And before we move on, I would be extremely remiss if I did not uh, thank our town administrator. I know this is something you have been working on before the um, zoning bylaw ever came to a town meeting <laughs> so it's been a while and you hung in there and um you dealt with my craziness over the language throughout the last months and um i just really appreciate it and we're lucky to have such a good thank you fierce advocate um trying to bring business to town so thank you very much. it means a lot is that a motion i'll second that motion <laughs> <laughs> thank you. no motion needed for that <laughs> all right thank you um, Madam Administrator, is there a separate form for? No, you um, already. That's just for the CCC. As I said, they have their. They each have their mm -hmm. different processes. We've already done our letter of non-opposition for the record. Um, excuse me, the RMD, the uh, medicinal dispensary. Right. Okay. One last thing. We're still on town administrator reports. I, I feel like you thought we had moved on. Are we skipping the capital out? Oh my gosh, I'm sorry. I was so excited about tuition and <laughs> marijuana. Um, okay. <laughs> the capital, this is a very brief update. <laughs> no. <laughs> this is a very brief update. I had the pleasure of working with uh, <laughs> Robert Rendon, who is our sole member right now, I believe, of the Capital Outlay Committee. Um, I know that that hasn't really been a revitalized committee for some time due to some board vacancies and such. We met and went over the bylaw. Um, and determined some proposed changes. He is looking at the second draft that we compiled together, um, but we do expect to have that before the town um, in June at the next town meeting. So that would, the changes are membership of the committee um, and a different schedule from what is listed in the bylaw right now. It doesn't really make sense with our budget process, um, but that is forthcoming. So that's just an update. And that concludes my report. I apologize for going out of order. No, we appreciate it, Madam Administrator. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, moving along to old business, 6A, continuation of a hearing to transfer the liquor license. So this is a little bit of a formality. Um, from what I understand, there's some issues at the site that is preventing um, the owner of Alice's to complete some needed documentation. So because we had previously voted to continue the hearing tonight, we just need another vote to continue the hearing. I don't think that you need to do um, a specific date uh, if you're willing to re-advertise the hearing. Um, but if you'd like to do further it to another date, then we wouldn't have to re-advertise in the newspaper. But we don't know when he'll be ready. 
Well, I think just my, person, my personal opinion, professional opinion, um, would be um, given the circumstances, I'm definitely okay with taking that vote to continue and I support um, reposting when that hearing will be continued. Um, just out of understanding of the situation, business can be um, quite bureaucratic in its own ways. Um, so my position is that I'm okay with that. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion that we continue the hearing for the transfer of the liquor license for Alice's last. Um, but it's not it's Alice's, Giorgio's. it's Giorgio's. Yeah. They're moving um, to From Giorgio's, Giorgio's restaurant to Alice's, uh, contingent upon notification of the um, buyer that he can proceed. Is that? Works for me. I'll second that motion. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion on this? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it. That motion passes. Next on the agenda um, is the third reading and vote to adopt the town vehicle policy. Um, I think we have begun doing the first reading dispensing with the second and third. So we don't actually do the reading, but we do allow feedback during those periods. Um, we are on the last reading, so we are ready to take a vote to adopt uh, this much needed policy. So I am accepting uh, motions. I'll make a motion that we adopt the town vehicle uh, policy. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? I actually have one sure. um, question, and it's regarding our um, energy, our green communities. And since we have two of you right here, I thought it'd be a good opportunity. <laughs> so item 15 under this policy is fuel conservation. It says municipal vehicles shall not be allowed to idle unattended for extended periods unless the idle is necessary at an emergency scene or in winter conditions. Does that satisfy the requirement for an anti-idle policy, or should we do something more? I for sure it does. Do you mind if I answer? Uh, yeah, go ahead. I mean, you uh, please, sure it does. you know more than I do, but. <laughs> um, I had thought about doing an anti-idling policy. The reason why I didn't, I never like bothered to work on it is because I know police sometimes patrol and I'm not out there. I don't know if their cars are actually on or not and they're idling. Um, my, there, there is no anti-idling policy for the green community oh. program. It's just fuel efficient vehicle, um, and they poo poo idling, but they don't explicitly so, so do we here. So say, we're which good. is great. So they're in, they're in, right. uh, they justify okay. each other. Oh, so I thought our, our energy reduction plan specified an anti-idling policy. So I just they wanted to suggested drafting one. So we can definitely work on that, and Let's perhaps. See, think about making an exception for public safety departments, but we can hash that out in the future, okay. and I think we can definitely have that conversation for sure. Okay. Thank you. I think the, the anti-idling thing is practical if the facility they go to have a posted sign that idling is not allowed, but I think also when they respond to an accident scene or a home for an emergency, they're going to keep, if it's the ambulance running, because especially this time of the year, they of course. keep right. it warm. And so the but there are facilities that have those kinds of things posted, no idling. I've seen them at hospitals. I just have a little bit of anxiety about that, but we can, <laughs> about actually doing the anti-idling policy, but we can, we can definitely work on that for sure. Thank you. So we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion on this? Nope. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it, and the motion passes. And again, thank you. This has been a long time coming. This is the one. <laughs> thank you very much. Getting it done. Uh, I do actually don't have a final copy, but I'll leave it in your mailboxes to sign. We'll post it. Sure. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, next on our agenda is the second reading of the Selectman's Rules and Procedures. This is on the website. Um, I have not received any feedback. Um, about this, but I just want to let the public know that we will be voting on this, doing our third reading um, and the vote at our next meeting, which is November 28th, 2018. Um, so if you have any feedback uh, about this policy, uh, now is the time. You have two weeks. Great. Anything, anyone want to say anything else about that? I'm sorry. No. Okay. And same for my colleagues. If you 
have a, a change that you'd like to make upon, it, you, know, re, you know, you see something that you didn't see before, um, now's the time. So we have two weeks. Yeah, I like the fact that we're thinking about uh, ending at 11 o'clock, and even though we haven't adopted it yet, I would hope that tonight we end this we'll meeting at 11 o'clock. <laughs> All right. New business. Um, the first thing on the agenda this evening is the entertainment license for the Lights On 2018 ceremony. Okay. Yeah. For Chapter 140, uh, they need to be licensed. So they are requesting a, it's kind of a silly application. This is a form for everybody, but um, it is a one-day application license. She wrote the date and time, um, 3.30 to 7 p.m. on November 24th, 2018. And she gave you some details here, uh, as it is a nonprofit group that puts this on and survives largely on donations. I would also request that you waive the fee for them to hold this. If you, uh, if you vote to approve them. <laughs> no, Sorry, we want to charge the lights on committee. <laughs> um, so I'm accepting motions on this. Uh, I am make a motion that we approve the entertainment license for the lights on committee. And waive the fee. And waive the fee. Do we? Uh, I'll ask that in discussion. I ask that we amend it to waive the fee, and I'll second yes, the motion. Yes, I accept the uh, I'll second friendly that motion. motion. We have a motion and a second discussion. Have we established fees for entertainment licenses? I've never seen a fee. I don't think so, but I'm pretty sure uh, you've never provided an entertainment license before, and uh, you have to. So Does I just the law into, yeah, include a yeah. dollar amount. It's up to hundred dollars. Okay. Can we so we need to set some form? kind of a fee? <laughs> This was a little bit of a rush job, because I, I was know, like, all I right, know, we I need know. to do this. We don't meet again. Um, but yes, we do need to put together schedule fees. We need to put okay. together appropriate licenses. Some may five-year wish list, actually. Um, but it's up to $100, generally. OK. And to my colleagues, um, regarding fees and things like that, I think um, this might be sort of maybe after the budget season, we can have a meeting um, where we focus on different fees in town and maybe not, not like Board of Health fees, maybe like building fees and entertainment fees and have that discussion of how to proceed re by reassessing them. Are you okay with that? Yeah, and I think, okay. did we do a policy on waiver of fees for nonprofits or government? Because we have, we voted we to waive that. fees. Right. Well, um, generally, it's well, we nonprofit, non nonprofit, um, charitable, whatever. I think that's it's a kind of a we should unspoken put that in writing role. too. I think so too. So that we have a consistency. maybe that will be on our schedule fees. Yep. And it doesn't have to be long, but I, I agree with my colleagues, Selectman Goular. I think that um, going forward, again, not for this board, um, but we should have some consistency for businesses requesting different waivers and, mm -hmm. and, and non profits requesting waivers of fees and things like that going forward, just so it's fair and equitable for well, it's everyone. It's good for Karen, too, if they call in and want to permit, and she's, how much is this going to cost? And mm -hmm. when she finds out what their status is, she can say, it's the, the fee would be waived for your organization. And then put them online. Do you know Absolutely. what I mean? And, and people understand what it might cost to, um, you know, have an event, an entertainment event. Um, so as long as it's good for Karen, you, I'm sold. <laughs> Thank you for all that you do, Mrs. Brady. Um, so we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion on the waiving of the, or approval, excuse me, of the entertainment license for the lights on? Nope. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it. That motion passes. Bear with me just a moment, Cable. I'm actually going to um, request that we table items B and C. Okay. Until the next meeting. I'd I like the opportunity to get judgment. a little bit more. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we table agenda item 7B, uh, request for the Council of Agent to, for financial assistance for safety improvements, and C, terminal service agreement for Council on Aging in prime time. I'll second that motion. We have a motion and a second. And that makes it sound really horrible. <laughs> it's not that bad. Um, well, the, the, um, the professional services document for terminal is quite lengthy, mm -hmm. so I also would like a little bit more time to go through that. So I appreciate that motion. And regarding the financial assistance for safety improvements for the Council on Aging, that nothing horrible is happening. Um, they need something to be done about a canopy and a roof and um, they're looking at they need financial assistance but I don't know if they mean town meeting stuff 
of income transfer or what they're looking for. So. Thank you, Madam Administrator. Um, did we vote on the table? Nope. Sorry, I was speaking. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it. That motion passes. Next on the agenda this evening is an expanded notification form for transmission line refurbishment project. Madam Administrator? I'm sorry, I don't really no, no, have a lot your, to say no, on this. Um, they're just, I just would like letting to us speak. Why, why, like, why, why we're being told about this? Yeah, exactly. So they're um, expanding their system, and some of their path goes through Dighton. So it's to let you know about this project. You so it's can, a form, formality. Well, I'm, you know, to make you aware that they're going to be in your community. Um, you can send correspondence if you'd like. I don't believe that it's necessary, but um, it says the project requires several state agency actions and exceeds one MEPA threshold for an environmental impact report. Um, so this is, I'm assuming, probably a requirement through that CMR that they have to notify all these towns specifically about that. All right, I'm accepting motions. Um, Do we have to vote to give them permission, nope. or are they just saying to us we're just doing FYI, it? Just FYI, yep. Then oh, please. So if yeah, you have an issue, we'll us, tell yeah. them, but I don't. All right. Thank them for the courtesy of telling us. <laughs> Did CONCOM get this notification, too, because they're talking about vegetated wetlands? I don't know, but I can. There's no CC list. But. Project impacts are predominantly temporary and constructurally, but some permanent fill within bordering vegetated wetlands is anticipated. So that's a I think we should call. forward it to them. Yeah. Madam Administrator, can we that. get this document to yes. Mr. Mello? Right. And this is this we're CC'd on this documentation. This is being sent to a state agency. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're just happy to be on the yep. CC list. <laughs> okay. Next on the agenda is request to send letter of thanks to Mass DOT District Number Five for brush cutting along Route 138. Excuse me. Could I just? Sure. Because it's an agenda item, mm -hmm. would you accept a motion that says that the uh, Board of Selectmen reviewed this letter and uh, voted to forward a copy to the Conservation Commission? I'm Just okay so we that. show we took action. Yeah, I'm okay with that. I'll second that motion. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? That motion passes. Next on the agenda, again, um, we have a request to send a letter of thanks to Mass DOT District Number Five for brush cutting along Route 138. Can I ask a very dumb question about nope, this? No, no problem. Oh no, I'm sorry. Matt, so I'm sorry. on and the agenda that's posted, I have an item, and it's in your packet. Do you have this in your packet? Okay. Yes, I was wondering what okay. that was. It didn't go with anything. So the agenda that's posted has this item. I'm sorry. This is because I tried to do something that Karen usually did. <laughs> okay. Um, so this is an agreement. The, this came to us from the fire chief and he is looking to, well he's ordered an ambulance or is in the process of ordering an ambulance that he was approved at town meeting for and he found a lower price through the Houston Galveston group which is this group here. We have to sign an interlocal contract with them uh, in order to be approved to purchase off their list. So this is basically their version of a, of a state bid list okay. that they allow other communities to do. Mm -hmm. I have a form for you to sign um, and fill out. Actually, you're looking at it right now, mm -hmm. but that's the document. And uh, we fax this over to them, and then we become eligible. It's only for this fiscal year, so it expires, but the whole town, the reason is before you and not just the fire chief, the whole town will be eligible. So okay. if we need to purchase a police cruiser and it's a better deal, through HGAC, then um, we can, we're eligible to do that. So we need a vote to authorize me to sign? To enter into this interlocal contract. Okay. Are, I, you, mm -hmm. are you familiar with this group? Actually, no, I'm not. However, uh, many of the fire chiefs are, so he's got his own group, and um, mm -hmm. I find them very up to date on a lot of different things, so I trust their judgment. And, the um, Nord is in that group. Remember Chief Nord? Mm -hmm. That's fair. Mm -hmm. He's a good fire chief. Did, uh, Chief McGee gave you anything in writing about this? Um, no, he gave me this. This is it. He did request this, so. I did hear that it was going to be cheaper. Cheaper. So I'm, I'm in support of it. Through so, this, it, it, we come in under budget, actually, oh. um, for what was budgeted at town meeting. You're saying all the right things this it's evening. It's just the truth. <laughs> um, so I will accept motions pursuant to 
this interlocal contract for cooperative purchasing with HGAC by. I'll make a motion that we approve the interlocal uh, contract for cooperative purchasing with HGAC by. And what are we purchasing? Just the ambulance? The ambulance. Uh, or is this a oh, open this is This is the eligibility for us to yeah. be able to. Um, this isn't the actual ambulance. Yeah, we're not this approving is just to be this in that. Right. We're in the group cool. in this, use this that yeah. we are eligible to purchase off their list. Um, I'll second it. Are there any. Any fees, like we pay surcharge a fee. No. You buy, it's just. Is it like Palm buys, you just join exactly. the group? Yep, you just join the group. Norton actually uses this. Okay. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it. That motion passes. And I do just want to thank our chief, um, for doing his due diligence as always. Um, and um, my thoughts are, uh, and prayers are with you, sir, tonight. I apologize, okay. that was not on your agenda. No, but it was. It had always been in the packet and I just couldn't match it up with what was there. <laughs> so I was just, I'm glad to know what it was. I posted it though. <laughs> it was definitely posted. It's yes, online. it was. <laughs> Next on the agenda, um, is the request to send the letter of thanks to Mass DOT District Number Five for brush cutting along Route 138? And I have it's going to sound sassy, but I'm not being sassy. Are we thanking them for doing what they should have done? Yes. Why would we do that? Because we have tried and tried and tried literally for years, and there's never been a response. Um, when it happened this year, we've looked into it. No one knows how and why it came about. Everyone I could think of that might have had an influence to get that done said, oh, I don't know. I had people ask me about it, and so we, that's why I was curious. Um, when we first mentioned the sending this letter, we said, let's wait and see if they do Route 44, which they didn't do. I know. That was but we said we were going to send a thank you note just saying thank you, and we hope you're going to continue this. That's what it's about. <laughs> I have no problem voting to sign this. This is not controversial, people in the audience and people watching at home. What I'm gonna ask this board is that when we need something done from MassDOT, we also draft a letter and request that those things be done. Is that okay with my board? Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay. All right. I'm accepting motions. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I make a, um, a motion that we send the letter of uh, appreciate thanks and appreciation to the highway director at District 5 in Taunton for the brush cutting and weed removal uh, along 138 this past fall. I'll second that motion. We have a motion and a second uh, discussion. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it. That motion passes. Bear with me just a moment. Almost done, Cable. Stay with us. Next on the agenda, thank you. Take that Oh yeah, I already did. Right. Next on the agenda is the appointment of Ms. Rachel Conti to the Dighton Trails Committee. As I understand, that will be they so have a complete spot, committee. That's a, this is the fastest okay, committee to ever fill up. <laughs> And they are ready to hit the ground running when she's uh, a point. I mean, they could now, but they're hit waiting the for her. Yeah, they're hitting the trail, exactly. That's right. <laughs> so I'm gonna make, I'll make a motion that Rachel Conti be appointed to the Dighton Trails Committee. Second. We have a motion and a second. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it. That motion passes. And Dighton, this is yet another fresh new face volunteering for your town. We love new blood. Thank you, Ms. Conti. Next on the agenda is the appointment of Patricia Barlow uh, to the Development and Industrial Commission. I'll make a motion that we approve Patricia Barlow for the Development and Industrial Commission. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion on this? I just have a very quick sure. comment, if I may. I am very excited to see somebody like you on this committee because I feel that you have a lot of energy and enthusiasm, and I've obviously been focusing thing. on economic development, so I'm thrilled 
Um, so <laughs> their next meeting is Monday the 19th, so just get sworn in before then. <laughs> if you want to participate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. See, we tell you, you know, just if you, yeah, you come to the we get other slots. <laughs> We treat people coming here as an application for anything in general. <laughs> we just but assign do, you. <laughs> since you're here, I do want to thank you um, for not just applying for the school committee, but also um, for your continued interest in serving the town. It's greatly appreciated, and we're very fortunate. Yep. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, do we have any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it. That motion passes. Next on the agenda, we have, unfortunately, a letter of resignation from Mr. Dennis Gavoni uh, from the Open Space Committee. And I'm accepting motions. Uh, may I make a motion that we accept the letter of resignation from Dennis Gavoni from the Open Space Committee with thanks and appreciation for his service. I'll second that motion. We have a motion and a second. Discussion, and I just wanted to say thank you so much, um, Mr. Gavoni. You were on that um, committee since its inception, or since it was revamped um, last year, and um, I'm sure your service has been greatly appreciated, not by just your committee members, but also by this board as well. So thank you so much, and we hope that in the future you might have some um, some time uh, to volunteer again. All right, um, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? How yeah. many, just, mm -hmm. just how many vacancies do we have Quite now? a bit. I was, I was going to say this. I was actually going to say this after you Number voted. Two. If anybody would like to serve on that committee, we need your help because they're going to run in. They, I think with this, they're running into quorum issues now and they won't be able to meet. They're working on an open space plan. It's very important that they continue that work. Um, that opens us up to grants and some other items. And we all know we have quite a bit of a development in this town. Um, so we need them and that plan. So please send in your letters. Absolutely. And to that point, um, the town administrator and I had sort of been back and forth over the weekend about potential future grant opportunities. And a lot of the grants that I saw that were related to like conservation environment um, did require like an updated open space and recreation plan in place before you were eligible to apply. Um, so this is a very important committee. They're doing very important work. They're working on that open space and recreation plan with SERPID. They got grant money to do that. Um, so they're making things happen and we would really appreciate um, you applying and serving on that committee. Thank you, Madam Administrator. Next is a termination of contract with Comstar Ambulance Billing Service. I have never been so happy to see something Mr. on the agenda. Mr. Chairman, I will make the motion <laughs> that we terminate, we notify Comstar Ambulance Billing that we are terminating the contract for services. I'll second that motion. We have a motion and a second discussion. Justin, oh, go ahead. My, I feel like you were just gonna answer it anyway. <laughs> um, they are gonna hand off the things that weren't collected to the department, so or to the, the billing clerk. Excuse so here's me. what happened. So um, there's like an end date, and anything, you know, that's the threshold or the deciding factor. Anything before, any claims before that date are still with Comstar. Anything after that date go to our in-house ambulance billing clerk, who's Rebecca Moss, and is working out marvelously. Well done, and well done to Chief McGee. I know we're singing his praises tonight. He's not watching this. Um, <laughs> but he was true to his word, and he interviewed on this he came to a meeting in january on this and he is implementing this and uh, it's a savings to the town and Absolutely. a lot well it's not a state it's both it's a savings and a revenue maker um we and spent a lot of time more headaches with yes, the comms yes <laughs> so um well done him and i know that you're all very happy to take this vote mr chairman may i just add to sure. that uh motion effective january 1st 2019 is that absolutely. Acceptable? Uh, Ab absolutely. Just like it is in the letter. Mm -hmm. I'll second okay. that amendment. Okay. Yeah. All right. We have a motion and a second. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it. That motion passes. Under correspondence, again, we dispensed with reading the correspondence, but it is part of the packet. And if you are, for whatever reason, interested in reading <laughs> these letters, um, you have at it. Um, one is correspondence from MassDOT regarding Chapter 90 funding increase. 
I'm going to default to you because I know you might have something to say about that. Of course. I'm thrilled. <laughs> Charlie Baker gave us more money. Um, so chapter 90 is our, this is why we go to town meeting and accept public ways. Based upon our square footage around town, we get reimbursed through a very outdated formula. So the state legislature, recognizing this, had a supplemental budget and added more money, and we received $60,102 more than we were originally appropriated. So thank you, Charlie Baker. Uh, if it is the desire of the board, I would love to send a letter to the governor thanking him for this increase. And I will happily accept motions um, so for that letter. So I make a motion that we send a letter to um, Governor Baker and Lieutenant Governor Polito thanking them for support of additional funding for Chapter 90. I'll second that motion. We have a motion and a second. Discussion? Now you see, we're sending that letter to Mary Jo Perry and we're already getting more money. <laughs> it works. <laughs> it's fast. You get more bees and honey. <laughs> we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Unanimous. Um, opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it. That motion to send the letter to our fearless governor uh, is approved. Ne I'm, I'm not gonna read this. I am gonna say that we got a request from uh, Nicole Skylison, who is the um, office manager for the Zoning Board of Appeals, also assists from time to time with the Conservation Commission concerning Conservation Commission assistance. A lot of this concerns a digitization of Conservation Committee's files, um, which I think is fantastic um, and much needed. She is wanting to work additional hours with Mr. Mello, who is instrumental um, in the everyday functions of the Conservation Commission, um, organizing some files for transportation. Um, so, Madam Administrator, is there anything we need to vote on granting yes. that request? Uh, yes, you would okay. just need to, um, so this is a cost to the town. She's. I don't know if you want to limit the amount of hours that she'd be given through the Conservation Commission. They're obviously on board. They've requested it. Uh, for the public's knowledge, the Conservation Commission's files and items are here in this town hall, and they need to move to the old town hall. Um, and so she's going to assist in that, um, and that is going to be taken care of very, very soon. Um, is it a cost to the town or a cost to already existing funds for the Conservation Commission? Well, already existing, to me, that is a cost uh, to no, the town. No, no, yeah, I, I, Already I existing. Right. I just wanted funds, to know where it's It's their funds. Yeah. It's there. Okay. Um, and it's I believe there. her chairman, I'm under the impression that her chairman of the ZBA is okay with this. I would assume. Um, it's teamwork. It makes the dream work. And um, I support this because I need the Conservation Commission to move over there so we can get started with some other developments here in Town Hall. And I, I support this request, and I'm prepared to vote in the affirmative for this request. And I appreciate Ms. Skylison for taking that on, because I'm pretty sure she probably championed that idea. Um, so we love when people um, are enthusiastic and really enjoy their job and want to make those improvements. What I will say is um, I don't think that it's quite sustainable to have the zoning board office manager. They're very busy with zoning board stuff. We, we know that. That's a very busy board. Um, I do think we should consider, uh, my understanding is there used to be a conservation agent that assisted the Conservation Commission. I don't know, remember exactly when that stopped, um, but I think that we should start a discussion with conservation about the possibility of having a part-time conservation agent to assist them with whatever they need, just like the Board of Health has mm -hmm. the health agent. Um, that's not a discussion for this evening, but I do want to mention that. I, su I will s we'll hash out the specifics, but I do think that it is needed. Um, so I just think it's something that should be on our radar. Yeah, Nicole Skylison, uh, I had recommended back in uh, late January of this past year that she be hired as the office manager for uh, the Zoning Board of Appeals board approved to her. Mm -hmm. She's worked out excellent. She does 20 hours a week with the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals. Mm -hmm. She also works for the 40B committee. At, she uses comp hours or flex hours, yep. so it's no additional cost. I wouldn't want to limit the number of hours at this time anyway, because I think they need to do what they got to do. Agreed. If it gets to a, a point that we're spending more money than what they have, then obviously then we, we'll address, address it. But she's she is going to be an excellent person for this. Right. So I'm very she pleased that she's... A, I want to thank you mm -hmm. for making that decision to choose her. 
Um, she has worked fantastically, and we ever hear positive things about her, and she's clearly been an instrument of positive change um, with those boards that she works intimately with. Mm -hmm. so. I I yeah, we have to, yes. CBA okay. Very good. She's very good. I hope she sees this. Right? Um, so I just wanted to add that if you remember back in town meeting in June, they, there were a group of boards that came together. They're going to be scanning all their documents in and digitizing, similar to what the building department did, and this will prepare. This is part of that. So she's, she also and was the, the head of that project. Yeah. CBA is also one of those boards right. that's going to digitize their, uh, their stuff. So why do we need to vote on this if Comcom Because Com you're basically appointing her temporarily to work oh, through okay. Comcom. All right. Like a liaison? Right. Okay. Uh, so I'm well, I wouldn't call it a liaison. It's very much that was my project word, specific mm -hmm. um, to helping them move She's this along. Assisting with this project. Is it a temporary increase in hours for a project? Is the is the union on board? So no position exists right now. So the union doesn't really have a say. We're not creating a full position. We're creating a temporary position. My only concern is she's already at 20 hours, right. and. In the past, we would notify the appropriate union, not steward, but the outside union person. I think this it would be Joe in this Mr. case. Mm -hmm. Just to let him know that we need some help on a project and that, you know, she's, the board appointed her to do this just so that. I have no problem letting him know, but there's no position that exists right now that she would be filling. No, but it's extra so, hours. If another union member with more seniority says, I could, I could work with Charlie and do that, I just don't want the union to, I don't want another employee who might have more seniority to think that we're whatever. I understand. It's can a we, I understand. Can we the vote contingent upon, not sign off, but like the green light from Mr. McArdle who represents yeah, that yeah, union? Yeah, just notification Contact. to him. Uh, yeah. Notification. Correct. Yeah, just notification. notification. Okay. I'm okay with that. Are you, um, did we make a motion yet? No, not yet. No. No. Okay. I think we should have that in the motion, contingent upon approval uh, sure. by the union representative, Mr. McCardo. Okay, so I'll make a motion that we appoint uh, Nicole Skylison uh, to provide uh, assistance to the Conservation Commission on a temporary basis uh, to complete a project for scanning records uh, subject to the approval of Mr. Joseph McCardo. I, I don't know. I have a problem with the word approval. Mm. Can we just say um, subject to notification to him? He does have the authority to approve or disapprove. That's my concern. I disagree because there's nothing that exists. I mean, I don't have the contract in front of me. I just don't want to get into this precedent where we... Well, there's already been past pack practice. Whenever we've added, added hours, for even temporary, okay. we would notify him. And he's always been very cooperative, so I don't think he's going to object. The notifying is one thing, it's the approval that I have some, I'm also yep. troubled by too, too. so I I'm don't mind notifying, notifying him. him. I don't think we need his but approval. I don't want him to say yes or no and have right. authority over that. See, it's our well, town. We, see, we get to decide. Right now, all we're talking about, um, we've got some additional hours, mm -hmm. and <clears throat> this employee says, I'm willing to work those additional hours. What we normally do with additional hours is put out a notice and say, we've got additional hours on a temporary basis in such and such a department. And we let the union rep, Mr. McArdle, know ahead of time, just so that an employee, right. a union employee who has more seniority can't come and say, wait a minute, I didn't know about that. I could have applied for it. That's, all, that's the only reason we would do it is because if, if a union employee who is not a full-timer um, would want to do this, that's the only concern. But in your statement, you said notify. So I'm still in favor of notifying him, but not necessarily waiting for his approval. So. I think we should have the word notify as well. I used the word approval. That was more the language. I couldn't think of another synonym at that time. Well, it's 10 o'clock, so Correct. thank you. Yes, um, so there's no second on the original motion, correct? Nope. Is there a new motion? Yes, I'm going to make a motion that we approve on a, on a temporary position Nicole Skylison to assist the Conservation Commission and to notify the uh, appropriate union pr representative uh, of this 
of these additional hours. Okay, a friendly amendment. You use the word position and hours. It's only additional hours, it's not a position. Right. So you're gonna strike yeah, the word position. Important. I'll strike the word position. I'll second it. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Thank you. Thank you. And thank Nicole. Hasn't Mr. passed Scott. yet. No. <laughs> <laughs> all, those, <laughs> all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it. That motion passes. Next on the agenda, we have some announcements. We'll be brief public. Um, the Lights On 2018 ceremony uh, will be held on Saturday, November 28th, 2018 from 3.30 p.m. or at 3.30 p.m. Um, behind Dighton Town Hall. So we hope that you'll be there. Um, it's a, we love that. You debuted there This is my first year. event. This is her like, I already anniversary. have my speech. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> can't wait I loved it my kids loved it my in-laws loved it we're all coming back so see you Very there exciting get your vocal cords ready for those <laughs> I stand next to Mark Pacheco because he sings with a baritone you can't hear me it's perfect <laughs> so and were you given the microphone there is that no nope. Senator nope. Pacheco holds the microphone Good. I stand appropriately back and you his voice carries <laughs> all right um and next on the agenda um for announcements is the Dighton Lions Food Bank distribution will be held this Saturday, November 17th, 2018. My understanding is that it is still in the lower level of town hall. I, they were, I don't know if they still are, also um, doing it at the Lincoln Village Community Center. Mm. Selectman's reports, and again, it is 10:15, so I think we should be able to conclude the Selectman reports by 10:25. So. Attleboro Taunton Consortium Meeting, Selectman Goulart. We held a meeting, excuse me, they held a meeting on November the 1st. We did not have a quorum. We reviewed the funding from HUD. We were unable to take any votes on anything. No quorum. Mm -hmm. Next meeting is going to be uh, probably March, mm -hmm. and it's the approval of the annual budget. Mm -hmm. Lion, I'm sorry. <laughs> was you want me to keep to... going? Yes. <laughs> Lions Arts Festival. Um, Lost the minute. The, um, the, the Lions Arts Festival was well attended. I, there had to be thousands of people there. Um, the Stormwater Committee did have an information table. We gave out some of our new bags and handouts, uh, jar openers, um, uh, puzzles, um, uh, Gave away everything I had with me. We still have a supply for any future events, but I gave out over, I would say over 300 because we gave away all the old, the leftover green bags. So I, people were very, very pleased and receptive and liked the whole thing. So that was good. Um, Did you have anything? I believe you went as well. Yeah, I didn't represent the town. Mm -hmm. um, the Dighton Historical Society had a table there, but I also, I went as a Rehoboth Minuteman representing uh, <laughs> there are members in Dighton that uh, belong to me over the minute but we did some demonstrations fired our muskets made some uh, uh, bullets for the public and uh, everybody, was safe. everybody was safe <laughs> yeah we don't put the musket balls in the <laughs> muskets because we lose too many reenactors <laughs> are doing that so <laughs> into tribal council yep. uh, October 28th the board of selectmen was invited to Join the Poconucket and Wampanoag people in a gratitude celebration for protecting Council Oak by acquiring uh, the subdivision that was we refer to as Council Oak II. Um, you were at the tree, but you weren't at the Right. I went to the tree church. because that's where it was supposed to be. Apparently, they changed it and they had it at the church. Yeah, because of the mud. Um, French Paul. Um, it was, it started, I, I'm gonna say 10.15, I got home at three o'clock. It was a very interesting event. Uh, there was a, uh, it starts with a purification ceremony, a prayer circle. Uh, in that circle, um, two of the individuals that were very verbal, negligent, how do I want to say this? <laughs> Very critical of the town of Dighton Board of Health for the action it took because of health code violations were there. 
and both of them apologized and another individual apologized to the town and said that the individuals that came into this building and addressed at least one employee in here were out of line and um, there was no animosity they said and I said there's no animosity on the part of the town that if you wish to use the facilities told them who to contact for the field the um, pavilion uh, and eventually we will open up the new old town hall first floor uh, for public events mm -hmm. and I gave them Karen's name for that because we don't really have a schedule but anyhow uh, it was a very very interesting meeting um, and uh, I was honored with the, with the name, which doesn't normally happen. Um, the chief bestowed the name Spirit Talking on me. Wait, what's my name? You had to be there. Oh. I have to contact someone um, about But anyhow, um, so that was that. That meeting, that was, it was very informative. It was very interesting. What was the name again? Spirit, Spirit Talker. Talker. T a l k e r. I laughed when he told me. I didn't mean to laugh, but he says, "Do you he didn't like mean it?" Talking with and I. Are you sure? No, no. <laughs> spirits, the first word, um, which is evidently quite an honor. I mean, I learned so much about their customs. It's not like any other tribe I've studied. I mean, theirs are quite different from Navajos and others, Apaches. But anyhow, uh, the next item was the Bristol County Agricultural um, uh, Open House and the Fall Show. Again, a very well attended event. As usual, the events, the uh, displays, the programs, the everything that they did was so interesting. The uh, floral displays, the gardens that were created in the post barn, the uh, demonstrations with animals, the um, animal uh, dog grooming, things like that. Excellent program. Um, the the next one is the 40B committee updates. That's me, I believe. Uh, briefly, mm -hmm. uh, we met last week, November 7th, and we're working on the housing production plan that we have for the town. Uh, it's to expire in February. February. We have to do this every five years. Sherpa is helping us uh, come up with this production plan. In addition, we're talking about uh, affordable housing uh, in, the, in town, different areas that we can possibly put this uh, at. We're looking at uh, vacant areas. Uh, and I'm specifically concerned about the house, affordable housing for the elderly, so we're, we're looking into that. So that's what we're working on. We're going to meet in a couple of weeks. And, and Nicole Skylison is our secretary. So She wears many hats. She wears many she hats, does. and she's, we appreciate she is it. so organized. Mm -hmm. I can't say enough about her. The actually attended that meeting, was, um, I was there. It was a very well-rounded group of people to help kind of comment on all the mm -hmm. different facets of what a housing development uh, provide so it was um, I was very happy to be a part of it I had to leave early but so did I, but a lot of us did yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, mm -hmm. on October 31st I attended the Sursage Stormwater meeting uh, that was held over in Bridgewater and the guest speakers were from Weston and Sampson um, mm -hmm. and um, they talked about the uh, MS4 reports that are done mm -hmm. annually, the notice of intent that we sent, mm -hmm. uh, everyone was obligated to send, and uh, plans for going forward with compliance with whatever was submitted by the communities in uh, their NOI. And what they said was, don't wait for a response from EPA. You better start working on what you said you were going to do. <laughs> don't hold the, your breath. <laughs> the very interesting part of this was, we were the only, Dighton was the only community there whose Board of Health was totally in charge of this program. And several of them said, that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. So. Leading the way here. Um, and let's see, the, the, oh, today, oh, Veterans Breakfast, you were there. You want yeah. to do that one? Uh, briefly, uh, we had a Veterans Breakfast last Saturday at the uh, West Titan uh, Church. Uh, it was fairly uh, well attended, maybe 25 to 30 people who attended. Uh, we had extra food, unfortunately we can't, hand off the food to anybody else we had extra food so hopefully maybe next year we can advertise this a little bit more mm -hmm. uh, my wife and I volunteered to, uh, to serve the food and, and Mrs. Gulat was there with her husband who's a veteran so yes. it was appropriate uh, but it was fairly well attended it's, it's a good little service that they have it 
the beginning, uh, former selectman uh, Bob Perry spoke at it also. He's not here now, but he, he spoke at, at this, uh, the veterans breakfast. So hopefully, speaker. Yeah, so hopefully in the future we can get more people, more veterans to attend. So. What's kind of sad is uh, we're losing them, literally. Right. We'll lose them. And the last thing I have is today was the Mass Municipal uh, Monthly Meeting. Uh, we had a legislative review. Uh, there was a presentation on, on the, con es I should say, escalating problem of solid waste disposal. Covanta was there, and mm -hmm. they operate CMAS, yeah. which we toured. And um, there is a moratorium from DEP on building any more of those plants, and yet they're allowing more continuing to dump stuff into landfills and the obviously incineration, they've been able to reduce the uh, noxious emissions way, way down. So there, Covanta is working with, or communicating with DEP to see if there can be some kind of a <coughs> increase. But in the meantime, they just told everybody the cost of your recycling programs is gonna continue to escalate, so. Still happy we do it weekly. All right. Um, I do have two very brief updates. Um, Time's I, up, though. <laughs> I didn't even get to say anything. I could change the rules. Um, so I did a tour of the new police station. My colleagues had already done um, that tour. Um, so uh, what I will report, I don't want to, I didn't take any pictures. I didn't want to take any pictures. I really wanted everyone to see it the way that I experienced it. And it's not even done yet. It is close. Um, what I will say is, Every inch of that building is being used and used efficiently and appropriately. And I think people are really going to be mm -hmm. um, extremely, extremely happy uh, with that final product, which should be coming soon. Um, so I want to publicly thank Sergeant Cronin. I know he doesn't want me to thank <laughs> him, but I do want to thank you. He did, gave the tour on his like off hours. Yep. T total gentleman. You're a great officer, and I really appreciate that very much, sir. Next, um, I just, just wanted to a short, mm -hmm. uh, brief message. Mr. Uh, Seligman Pacheco and his wife and I and several other um, individuals in town, we're not in a formal committee, but we're working on what will be the open house for the first, well, the, the, the old town hall. Mm -hmm. um, and we're looking probably at a January date. We haven't set it, but we just want everybody to know that we will announce that ahead of time, and it will probably be on a Sunday, mm -hmm. and it will be open to the public. Yes, yeah, Sunday, I can go. Okay, next, uh, I did go to the train awards, so it sounds like the Oscars. Um, it was at the high school, and um, the regional school district was awarded the train award for energy efficiency. Um, they were nice enough after the award ceremony to allow us to tour the bioenergy mass boilers. That's we cool. saw the wood chips that go in. Well, that is fascinating. It was really cool, yes. actually, I have to say. Um, I'm not getting any ideas, I'm but. I'm a little jealous. No, it I was, want to go see it. <laughs> it was absolutely fascinating and hearing about not just the energy savings, but the dollars that they're saving just on an annual basis is really, really cool. And one thing I think we should talk about later is performance evaluation contracting. Mm -hmm. Something about. Do you know what I'm talking about? For us, you mean? Like for the about? town. Oh, the, not related to train, right. Not You've moved on to, for, to the next point? No, so oh. the reason why the schools, my understanding is the reason why the regional school district was able to save so much money is because they did not a traditional contract for energy efficiency, for those structural improvements, they did performance contracting. Okay. I said evaluation, I'm that sorry, was a wrong yeah, word. Sorry. Um, and I think maybe that's something we can talk about. But anyway, um, congratulations to the school district um, for being a leader. We are about to embark on becoming a designated green community in part because of the leadership that the regional school district had in energy efficiency. So it was an honor to be uh, part of that crowd that was able to witness um, and that award ceremony, and they were the only award in the entire world. Mm -hmm. So, wow. oh, I thought it was just the country. Oh, no. Wow, that's what I thought. Well too, done. They set us straight, yeah. right? Well Can we do a clap for you all? At that new energy meeting that you know that um, Charlotte mm -hmm. Diogo Diogo. and that that I attended previously, October, whatever, they asked me if that wood chip 
furnace was up and running because they oh, want to yeah. see it. And I said, yes, it is. Um, contact Constellation them. Energy, the representatives from that had never seen one. And I said, get in touch with Mr. Nathan. Absolutely. want to see that. Everyone should see it. It's really cool. Something definitely to be proud of, the future for sure. And it's so clean. It is so clean. It smells good, too. Yeah, it's it does. Chips. You don't get that fuel right? smell. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, okay, so for acknowledgments this evening, we have the 100th birthday of Miss Mary Rubella. Does anybody want to say anything before we clap? Happy birthday. Right? What a milestone. <laughs> Congratulations. And we have an anonymous donation to Primetime in the amount of $30. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we acknowledge the anonymous donation of $30 to Primetime. I'll second that motion. We have a motion and a second. Uh, further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it and that motion passes. Approval of the minutes. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we approve the minutes of the regular selectmen's meeting October 3rd, 2018. I'll second that motion. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it. Accepting for review. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we accept for review the minutes of the regular selectmen's meetings on October 24th and May 2nd, 2018. I'll second. I'll second that motion. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it. And that motion passes. Approval of the warrants. I'll make a motion that we approve the warrant 14A-19. Oh, excuse me. Is that the one you want us yeah, to stri not start with on the next one, Mr. Taylor? Yeah, October 11th is the one to start with. Oh, okay. I'll make a motion that we approve the warrant number 15A-19 in the amount of $94,860.73 and warrant number 15B-19 in the amount of $176, $76,091.50. Nice try. <laughs> we have a motion in a second. I can't believe some of the monies that we... <laughs> I know. Goes so to a good totally cause. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we have a motion in a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Oh, aye. Sorry, I'm reading the next <laughs> I, I know, I said aye. It's too. late. Yeah. Um, so the ayes have that. That motion passes. There were no abstentions and no nays. I'll make a motion that we approve warrant number 16A-19 in the amount of $100,530.45. Warrant number 16B-19 in the amount of $87,622.24. And warrant number 16C-19 in the amount of $1,129.48. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Abstentions? <coughs> the ayes have it. That motion passes. Would you like to continue? Um, oh, do you want to take a sip? We can ask um, Mr. Pacheco. Mr. Pacheco, would you do 31 and I'll do 7 in tonight? Well, I want to do 7. That's all right. I'll do 31. I uh, warrant, uh, I make a motion that we approve. So <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> We it's late. It was a joke. <laughs> I'm sorry to the public. I apologize. Uh, I make a motion that we approve warrant number 18-A-19 uh, in the amount of $99,900.03. <coughs> warrant number 18-B-19 in the amount of $122,385.14. And warrant number 18-C-19 in the amount of $829.37. Second. We have a motion and a second. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it. That motion passes. Selectman Gulak. Um, Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve uh, warrant 19A-19 in the amount of $103,800.94 payroll. Warrant 19B-19 in the amount of $110,663.41 and warrant 19C-19 in the amount of $98.22, the last two being uh, accounts payable all day to November 7th. I'll second that motion. Excuse me. We have a motion and a second. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? 
Abstentions? The ayes have it. That motion passes. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move that the we approve, excuse me, warrant 28-19, the amount of $105,940.01 payroll. Warrant 20B-19, the amount of $505,324.32, and Warrant 20C-19, in the amount of, yikes, $2,522,657.75, DR assessment, the last two being accounts payable, dated November 14th. And we looked into second that, but I will. <laughs> we have a second. motion. <laughs> we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it. That motion passes. Last but not least, public input. Do we have any input tonight? Is this going to be put on the uh, website? Oh, it already is. Oh, okay. absolutely. Yep. This is just the lights on. Schedule events, it is online. Website, Facebook. Bulletin boards. Bulletin, we love bulletin boards here. All right. As, oh, excuse mm -hmm. me, one other thing. Um, stuff the cruiser. Oh, oh December I have that on first, my notes right? too. Um, I'm actually not sure December on the page. December 1st. December 1st. 9 a.m. 2 p.m., I believe. Oh. Or 2 in, or 3 p.m. In front of the old town hall. Yep. Yep. So, Bring clothing and toy drive, clothes. right? And clothing too, right? Clothes to me. It's clothing too, right? It's not exactly. just toys, yep. it's clothing. Uh, clothing. clothing. Yeah, hats and gloves, yep. and gloves, yeah. scarves, scarves, things like that. All new. All new, yeah. All right, as chairman, I'm gonna entertain a motion to enter into executive session pursuant to Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 30A, Section 21A, Exception 3, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigating position of the public body and the chair so declares, I declare. And Cable, you'll be happy to know, open session will not reconvene. Se I, oh, excuse me, I'll make that motion. I'll second that motion. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it and that motion passes. Roll call. Aye. 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 Cable, thank you so much. Thank you for hanging in there. We appreciate it. Uh, everybody stay warm. It's cold outside. And happy Thanks for coming, too. Thanks for coming. I don't know happy if we've thing. We just got